I don't know why that power director was uh, on. on oh, the it was the, the power video. director gonna, thing. Yeah, I got to clip that out. Uh, anyways, uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. in the chat, uh, this is episode three of Why I Left Islam with myself and Brother Ijaz Ahmed. Um, Yo, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah. Um, just looking at the chat, okay. Someone said they sent me an email, casual Muslim, I'm looking for it. I uh, don't think I saw it. Yeah, I don't think I see it. Might be best to send me another email, inshallah, and I should be able to find it. Yeah. All right, just bear, just bear with us a second. Just go and We will, through. we will. Making sure... Hope everyone is really doing right. fine. And I'm thank you that you guys are joining us for another stream, alhamdulillah. Oh, but I think what's a fairly important topic, right? Mm -hmm. These videos are made by Christian production companies um, to convert Muslims to Christianity or to give confidence to those people who are already Christian. It's to say right. to them, look, look, if Muslims are coming to Christianity, this must be the right religion. Now, I'm not here, and Isa is not here, we're not here to hate Christians. I we're not here to say that we hate the religion of Christianity. Don't get it wrong. We disagree, but we disagree based on principles, based on belief, etiquette. We we disagree based on what the Quran says, what the Sunnah says. And the thing is, we as Muslims, when we make videos about people's reversion testimony, their conversion testimony, we we don't invent stories. We don't tell them to make it up as they go along, like throw in whatever you want there. I want to know what actually and genuinely led you to Islam. And sometimes I meet people who have very simple stories. They mis they misread a verse of the Bible. It made them doubt the Bible. So they decided to study Islam and they became Muslim. We're not saying because they made a mistake in understanding the Bible that Islam is true, but rather once they got disbelief with the Bible and they chose to search other religions and they studied and decided to choose Islam, that's the basis for their conversion. And that's what we're going to be looking at from the Muslim perspective. Is that correct, Brother Isa? 100%. Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, got the Brother Allegation Hunter here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, um, so I think from, from now on, we'll just be doing the um, uh, just three videos we'll review only three instead of doing four like we did the first time uh okay. second time we did three and did uh did three this time and i'm trying to keep the videos within like i said 10 15 20 minutes so that we're not taking forever but if i find a video that's long and there's like no other shorter clips of it uh we can just we don't have to do the entire video but you know try to pick apart i guess the, the main uh reasons or whatever and, and analyze that yeah um yes, yes. so uh Without any further ado, we're, we're okay. So, and just to be just to be clear, I'm not choosing. You know, uh, uh, people who said they left Islam uh, and then became Christians. Although some yes. of them do become Christians, some of them just leave Islam, become atheists, or whatever the case is. So, uh, but uh, anyways, you, you you'll see obviously when we uh, mm -hmm. go through these videos. So, without Thank further ado, uh, Bismillah. Let's get to the video, inshallah. Okay, um, and and all the all the uh, videos that I clip, their URLs are in the description, just for copyright sake, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Is Muhammad Faridi? Uh, can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear that perfectly fine. Let and me bef before we start though. I think we need to get more likes on this video. Yeah, <laughs> inshallah. I'm going chat. I'm gonna need you guys to uh, what was the word here? Give us a hand, inshallah. Because when you like the stream, it advertises it YouTube. It, it drives the YouTube algorithm to share this stream with other people. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that we're reaching as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, Brother Isa, they can actually email us and send us conversion, Christian ex-Muslim conversion stories, atheist conversion stories. And we will look at them as well. You can submit the ones you want us to take a look at, inshallah. Yeah. All right, let's mm -hmm. move, inshallah. Let's get rolling.
I, I I put the sound going through my ear my ear uh, my headphones instead of the speakers here. So if you just let me know if you can hear this. Okay. Oh no. Can't hear that. Huh. No. That's weird because I had it set up that way before. All right, that's fine. I'll just uh I'll just change it and draw it back. Just a little it. it should it should be okay. If you inshallah. hear any feedback in my mic, just please let me know. I'll let you know. Uh, inshallah. Oh, inshallah. Let's roll. Okay. In, into a devout Muslim family. In 1984, where, when I was born, the country of Iran and Iraq was in war. That was an eight year long war days for our countries. Many of Muslims willingly gave their life up for the, for the cause of jihad, for to defend Islam or advance it. And uh, my uncle, two of my cousin, they joined that war willingly and gave their life. Uh, yeah. Okay, so just off the bat, uh, mm -hmm. This guy's lying. Okay. What do you mean? I, he's mm -hmm. just lying. You can just tell. It's like you remember the, the other guy that we did on the on on episode two with the Christian hands. It's possible. Like, like that guy was like plainly lying. This guy, I'm still waiting. Like I, I'll well, still give the benefit of the doubt, but I am aware that many Iranians do leave Islam regularly because they were never actually introduced to Islam. They practice this like weird like like mixture of Zoroastrian and Shi'i beliefs that are distinctive from Sunni Islam, and so they might genuinely think that you know when people beat themselves that this is permissible and that we accept this and we don't. So this person, I'm still waiting to see, but there is nothing inherently wrong that if your country is at a war that you join your country's effort. Like people do that. People sign up for the army of their country, right? Yeah, yeah. Whether or not there's like a religious basis behind it or something, if your country is at war, you're likely just going to join your country's professional army. Yeah. Our brother I Issa, did. what do you what do you think about that, brother Issa? Yeah, I did. You did. I mean, right? Well, yeah, and, and, but that was uh, I mean, that was before I became a a Muslim. But most people do. I mean, most people aspire, you know, well, young men, you know, who really don't have anything else. Right, they aspire to get into the military or to the police force, yes. or something like this. Yeah. Um, even though up, you would think that up front, you know, the, uh, the the checks aren't as great, but in the long run, if if you were to stick with it, you know, you get your pension and you know you get all kinds of benefits for being a soldier. You know, after being twenty years in active duty, yes, so yes. so there so there are benefits obviously into becoming uh, a part of the government, right? So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on on that because we literally went. <laughs> that was like fifteen seconds, but I just, yeah. I just feel like he's lying just by. It's just like facial expressions and like how he's saying certain things. But inshallah, Again, um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go. Life's up for the cause of Islam. My mom was a devout Muslim, and uh, she mandated us to um, to follow Islam and to fulfill the Sharia of Islam. Even though we speak Farsi in the country of Iran, we had to learn Arabic in order to speak to the God of Islam. So that is the only language accepted. Can we pause? Allah, the God of Islam. Yeah, go ahead. Arabic is the only language that the God of Islam... Where, where is that written? I would like okay. to... Maybe maybe it's in my book here. Or so. <laughs> where, where, where do we get this from? Where do they get this from? Uh, it's very confused. And by the way, this is a common Christian claim. When you perform salah, you read the Quran. What language is the Quran in Arabic? You recite yeah. the Quran as it is. No problem with that. I mean, literally, when the Jews pray and they recite the Shema, they recite it in Hebrew. They don't recite it in English. Yeah. And so if this was an inherent problem, then this would make Judaism false, which they believe Christ Jesus followed. So yeah. It's a really strange claim. And Brother Isa, is it not correct that we can make du'a in any language? Yeah, you can absolutely. raise your hands to Allah at any point and yeah. speak to Him. But salah is something legislated by Allah to be in a specific way and for a specific purpose. And so you have to cleanse yourself before it. And you have to wear certain clothing before it. And you have to be in a pure state to perform it. That's a specific thing. But when they make this claim that Arabic is the only language that the God of the Quran knows or mm -hmm. hears, I speak English. I'm Trinidadian. 
<laughs> you speak Spanish. You're Hispanic. Puerto yeah. Rican, Boricua. Right? Oh, yeah. Do, do, do we think that God does not hear us when we speak in English? Do, or Spanish? It's a really strange claim. But yeah. that's a claim, bad claim. Let, let's keep rolling, inshallah. Hang on a second. My camera is not working for some reason. Oh, I was recording. That that doesn't help. All right. <laughs> How's it way, odd? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why, yeah, why, and I, your, and, mm-hmm. why was that ever message on your camera the same thing I have on my t-shirt? The same color schemes. A little bit strange. Thing, a little no? weird, eh? <laughs> I don't know. Nah, I, and I, I was going to say the same thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, so so I, I honestly believe in, uh, I'm sure, uh, uh, Quran, I'm sure Ijaz will, will correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, I think one of the purposes of reciting Quran in the Arabic when you're uh, in Salah is for a very particular reason, and that is what? The preservation of the Qur'an. Because if you're reciting it over and over and over and over again, you know, those who have memorized it will correct you if you're wrong, because you do have to recite, you know, out loud. Not like the other guy who said you have to uh, scream and shout. Remember shout it out. Yeah, but yeah. So It's not really that, like, that could be a benefit of it. Yeah, but, yeah. but we That's specifically recite it because Allah has we, uh, told us to. Correct. Correct. Exactly. It was, yeah, but uh, cool. but yeah, and then and then yeah, you make dua and you can speak to I can speak to Allah in this language, right now. Spanish. Yeah, right now. Uh, and the thing and the thing is, I mean, if what they claim is true, like, like let's just suppose that it's true, that means that if I wanted to sin, I could sin in any language other than Arabic, and Allah would not know it. Right. Yeah. That's the necessary <laughs> conclusion. That's the necessary conclusion. So you learn a language other than Arabic, and you sin in that language. You tell lies. Yeah. You speak about Allah however you want. You make up words for the. You can do whatever you want, and yeah. God can't judge you. You got him. It's a. Yeah. It's a. It's a gotcha moment. No, it's not. It doesn't work this way. It's yeah, very yeah, simple-minded <laughs> thinking. Yeah, Abdullah. All right, let's keep it rolling, inshallah. And uh. I went to mosque and to a lot of um, madrasas, to a lot of Quran classes to learn Arabic and to learn how to recite the Quran and how to memorize the verses, the passages, sometimes chapters of the Quran in order to pray to Allah. Uh, and by the way, guys, uh, get on uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, or whatever other social media platforms you might have. Please, guys, please, please, please share uh, the stream. So that more and more people can, you know, obviously see uh, the the stream. I mean, we're doing this for a reason. So uh, this is also a form of da'wah, right? Uh, Because it may be that there are some actual Muslims out there who might stumble upon a a, an issue like this, and they may see uh, the video and say, "Wow, you know, I didn't know that. You know, this is actually how you're supposed to pray, or you're supposed to act, or." whatever the case might be, or maybe I didn't know that I was supposed to know this or that, and it might help them out, right? So, so inshallah, we're doing our part to be here and, and provide this type of material so that people can benefit from it. Uh, all I ask is, you know, please do your part as well. Share the stuff out that we might be able to get some more people to watch uh, the stream, inshallah. But, but Brother Issa, it's Zab- already providing benefit if you would believe that. It's yeah. already providing benefit. I'm just going to show you that right now. I'm putting you on the screen. If yeah. I can just, if then I click it, it moves. I'm not sure why. One more time, I'm going to try to click the message. And in any case, a sister says that she recently accepted Islam and she she has no iman. And these streams will help her, inshallah. Oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, 305. Uh, oh, okay. That's, that's Florida. I'm in Florida myself, alhamdulillah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You you know, new Muslims or, or or even Muslims who have been Muslim by 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 mouth, right? Uh, people who have accepted Islam but really didn't dig into the the religion, you know, and and tried to learn. I mean, these are platforms where we try to give you some tools and maybe some understanding uh, for the uh, you know the religion of Islam. And if you at the beginning of this stream, you see my little intro. It's a muted intro. I got to find a different tune because I don't like getting copyright claims, right? But anyways, um, in the beginning, you'll see that I put like other suggested uh, channels that you can watch like EF Dawa, the brother Ijaz here on Calling Christians, um, Hamza's Den. I mean, there, there's so many different Dawa channels. 
right? Mm-hmm. But off the top of my head, I, I think I listed maybe like like eight of them or ten of them or something. So if if you want, you know, other channels to consider, go to the beginning of the stream and you'll see where it says channels to consider, and and you'll see the different uh, channels there. Inshallah. Uh, let's you get know, back to the. Oh, go ahead. This, I'm sorry. This, this is a really nice comment, right? <laughs> Muhammad Rasulullah. Imagine this guy thinks that if you say Muhammad Rasulullah, <laughs> you've invalidated your shahada. Well, if that invalidates your belief, then when the gospels misquote Jesus, are they all apostates by that by that measure, by that measurement stick? When the church fathers don't quote Jesus accurately, have they left the fold of Christianity? When they don't baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and only in the name of Jesus. Is that kufr? Is that disbelief? In any case, I, I've responded to that uh, uneducated bigot and hopefully, inshallah, he learns his lesson because I don't yeah. want to have to give him another one. It'll cost him much more the next time. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, let's see. How can you justify going from Tawheed to man worship? There is no justification for it. But uh, let's keep going with the video, inshallah. Okay. Let's keep rolling, inshallah. Wa alaikum as-salam to the book. to brother Uncle Bati. May Allah preserve him. Ameen. Ameen, ameen. They told us a good Muslim, if he recites and memorizes the Quran, he would not burn in hell because your brain, your body will have the eternal, eternal war of Allah in it, so it would not be burned in hell. So that's what, yeah. that's what I did. So I start. <laughs> this, this dude just Christianized what we think about the Quran. We don't yeah. think that some eternal Quran like lives inside your body. <laughs> uh, stuck for the love, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, so what the hell was that? Mm. Where did he get? I don't even think Shi'i Muslims like like uh, Shi'i people even claim this. Like mm. I don't even think they claim this. The honest to God, Isa, I think you were right at the start when you think this guy's just straight up lying. Like you can. Uh, it's, you can uh, I make that claim. It's 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 a baseless claim when I say he's lying a, uh -huh. a little bit, right? So there's really no evidence apart from like his body language. That's that's okay. why in the very beginning I'm like, okay, I think he's lying, or hey, I think he's being truthful, but or whatever the case might be. But as uh -huh. the video progresses, it gets worse. like like what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. It's it just appears to get worse. And I just want to mention very very quickly. I, I I'm sure you're not done with this uh, response here with this point. Um, all you brothers and sisters who go to our channel and our videos and, and you know, you, you uh, argue against the Christians and the claims that they make on the videos that in jazz and I make, man, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, because I cannot respond to all these people. One of my videos has like 250 comments. I, I can't respond to all of them. So I, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless each and every one of you for, for you know, uh, going to our videos and commenting against these uh these these uh anyways missionaries uh, uh, that's, real. that's a good word because i was going to use a different word but anyways i know i mean i, I mean i mean I, yeah. I mean are you done with what you're saying about the, uh, yeah so it's just for anyone's clarification we don't believe that the quran enters your body and makes you magically eternal or something like this I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, w I would like to know where they got this from but i think it's i'm just going to assume that they made it up like as a Muslim in the chat, this must be like strange for you to hear. I've never heard like you go to like a khutbah and Imam is like, and if you memorize the Quran, it lives inside of you eternally and you can't burn it. <laughs> like, I've never yeah. heard this. These are these like little have... weird, weird beliefs from like di different, you know, and don't get me wrong, even within certain sects of uh of of or different even denominations of Christians, right? Or even Muslims, supposedly, like Shia. Even certain groups, like certain people might have varying beliefs within the Shia faith, right? Or whatever it is that they believe. You know, they might believe in the core tenets of, of whatever it is that they believe in. And then, you know, this family here or this community here might believe in something different, you know? Uh, it's, it's just strange, man. Really odd. Let's keep rolling. Memorizing a lot of the chapters. One day I was praying to Allah, and at the time of my prayer, when I was seven and eight years old, and uh, I was pr praying in Arabic and uh, reciting those prayers, but I did not understand what I was saying. So 
I went to my mom and asked her, Mom, does uh, is this God, the God of Islam, would not speak Farsi? Does he understand Farsi? Can I speak to him in Farsi? My mom said, you do not you do not want to be tormented by Allah. You do not be tortured by Allah. A good Muslim only surrenders, only submits. So I went and, I saw, and, I, and from that moment on, I did not ask any more questions. I just put my blinder on and just followed Islam. And um, okay, can, I washed myself pause? every day, f pray five times a day. What, what the hell is this nonsense? You ever heard a child ask one question and never ask the same question again? Like, the, yeah. have you ever seen a child stop asking a question? Even if they get an answer, you have to teach them multiple times. But apparently, th this moment was so traumatic for him, his mother didn't even answer the question. She just said he's going to burn in hell if he keeps asking questions like these. <laughs> what, what the hell is this nonsense, right? Because I, like, I just want to pull up an ayah. Like, like, he says he's a devout Muslim. He said he was a devout Muslim. And he he went to many, according to him, not one, but he went to many madrasas to memorize the Quran. So I know most yep. people typically go to, to one madrasa to, to, to learn some of these things. Uh, but I just want to put up one eye of the Quran. He's definitely employing Christian Takiya. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, but Christian taqiyah is just Christian speech. Like, like at, at the end of the day, they, they are being deceptive intentionally, right? Muslims who are like who, who understand the, like basic Islam would know these things. Uh, let me just bring up this ayah here. I think I found it. Majid, uh, Majid says uh, Isa regarding the Quran supposedly living inside the heart. I think he superimposed. Uh, the christian idea of god's words written inside your heart yeah that's romans uh, chapter two but yeah that's yeah, exactly what ijaz was saying alhamdulillah most likely a literal copy page let me see here i'm just sharing an eye of the quran really quickly okay so i can just where's the stream yard window i've lost myself all right there we go but oh i can't i need to zoom in to that for us yeah, right, hang on one second we can do this thank you so it says he that allah he is what he is who uh, was Samuel Basir, that he is the all hearing, the all seeing. He literally says that in the Quran. And this is in uh, chapter 17, ayah 1, Surah Al-Isra, ayah 1. And I think even before this, it's mentioned in a couple other places as well in the Quran. So if this dude for many years went to many madrasas and did not read this ayah of the Quran, what was he reading? The entire time, what was he reading? Yeah. Muslim is taught that Allah knows all things. And even, even if you say, okay, Ijaz, maybe he didn't get that far. The reason he went to so many madrasas is because he was a bad student. I say, okay, to this, maybe he's a very bad student. So I go to Surah Al-Fatiha, where it literally says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of all things, of everything. So there is nothing that he's not the Lord of. So even if you speak to him in Farsi, he's the Lord of that. Even if you speak to your mother in a whisper, he is the Lord of that. There is nothing that he is not the Lord of. Yeah. Can you make this claim seriously? With mm -hmm. a face. And the thing is, I am sure, I am sure because of this video and videos like these, Christians are going to come to Muslims and when they give us, you know, they evangelize, they proselytize, they try to preach to us, You'll hear them saying things like this that God only God can only hear you if you speak in Arabic. No, that's untrue, guys. By the way, like the, the thing is, if you want to convert someone to your faith, you shouldn't lie to them, you shouldn't make things up. And even if I say, even if I say this is the Christians' perception of Islam, when I say to a Christian that God is all seeing, all hearing, right? What does the word all there mean? Right, even if you're a Christian and you're unaware of what I believe, I believe they understand the word all knowing, all hearing. Mm. So, I, I, I invite my Christian, you know, viewers of the stream try to be honest about Islam. And if it is that you have to misrepresent Islam so much, then why do you think you're doing that? Or why do you think you have to do that? Well, to get converts, hey, this, is, this is a command from Paul. You know, to a Jew, I'm a Jew. To a Gentile, I'm a Gentile. To the weak, I'm weak. To the strong, I'm strong. All to get but a few. Whatever whatever he can grab, if he can just snatch up a few here and there, alhamdulillah. 
well, that's what, um, to be clear, that's what um, uh, Origen says, that even if, like, 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 you can use material falsehood if it gives them spiritual truth or it leads them to yeah. spiritual truth. Just understand that. Think about that. Mm -hmm. For me as a Muslim, I can't lie. Even if I want to, yep. I can't, I'm forbidden. Allah forbids us from using false speech. Would you so, then say, would you then say that Romans, Romans chapter three, or, uh, Romans three verse seven, is it? Or it says, if, know, my, if through my lie abounds his glory, why am I considered a, a liar? The way that some Christians interpret that is, even if a person lies unintentionally, but it leads someone to the glory of God, there should be no problem. With exactly. That. But like, people, for but, me, that's still an issue. For me, that's still an issue. Exactly. But Paul, the, okay, the commentators, the commentators, mm -hmm. uh, I read some of them. I'm not going to pretend that I read all of it or something like this. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, right? But from what I have read, this is Paul pretty much justifying saying that so long as, you know, um, like you said, the truth of God abounds or if his glory is manifest in a lie that you did or something of this nature, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that their condemnation of it is just, mm -hmm. which is, which is quite contradictory when you look at it. Right. But so why would you do it? If it's like, I'm going to do this evil thing and people will condemn me, but it's okay. If they condemn me, it's fine. You know, because God's glory, uh, abound to him. Paul wasn't mm -hmm. lying, brother. See, this is the thing. He, uh, yes, yes. Whoa, whoa. He he was. Guys, we just called this. We just caught this. He said Paul wasn't lying. No, no, just no, no. You him. told me this. You told me this about how <laughs> Paul was a liberal, you know, Hellenized <laughs> Jew. Jew. Yep. Um. So so Paul was so. Uh. I, I, look, I'm not well knowledgeable about Paul. I know a few things. I don't think that he just goes around lying to people. Like everything he says is a lie. But when the opportunity arises, arises, right? But it, to us, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because if you steal something, we call you a thief. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying. So, but what if I told you? What if I told you that your understanding of Paul is actually a doctrine that some of the earliest authors in the Christian Church actually took it in the way that you understood it—that Paul did say that line, perhaps maybe okay. Would that surprise yeah. you? Uh, no, it wouldn't. Because right. so I always thought Paul was a liar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so I try to argue from a perspective of giving a bit of grace, right? But historically, yeah. historically, um, in his uh Eusebius, the, the church father, he has a book called The Preparation for the Gospel. It's book 12, chapter 30, and chapter 31 of that volume is titled That It Will Be Necessary Sometimes to Use Falsehood as a Remedy for the Benefit of Those Who Require Such a Mode of Treatment. Really long chapter title, but he's saying it's necessary sometimes to use falsehood so that people can be led to the truth about Christianity. And and the thing is, you can actually go on to read what he actually says. That's just the chapter title, right? Some Christians have argued over the years that it may be possible that the chapter title is a later edition. So I say, okay, let me grant you that it's a later edition. What does chapter 31 say? It says, but even if the case were not such, as our argument has not proved it to be, if a lawgiver who is, be, uh, who is to be of ever so little use could have ventured to tell any falsehood at all to the young for their good, is there any falsehood that he could have told them more beneficial than this, the gospel, and better able to make them uh, all do everything that is just, not by compulsion, but willingly? So he's arguing here, as in his own writing, that if a person of influence like a lawgiver was to lie towards children so that they believe an eventual truth, that is better than the lawgiver compelling and forcing them to believe. Mm. Exactly. So, so it would be one thing if 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 he said uh you use analogies or you 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 help them. Right, you, 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 you don't, you, you analogize, you, you give stories, metaphors, you make it simple in little bits, so over time they understand doctrine. But he's saying here, so what if they lie a little bit and they use some falsehood? No, it's better than us forcing them. So that's the that's the two alternatives. It's not giving them the truth. The two alternatives are lying to them or 
or, or forcing them to believe, compelling them to believe. Yeah. Can you give us, uh, alhamdulillah, thank you for that, brother. Can you give us the understanding of uh, taqiyya in Islam, please? There's no understanding of taqiyya in Islam. I'm sorry? And that's it. There is no view of taqiyya in Islam. Uh, some Shi'is practice this, but for a Muslim, we don't have a doctrine of what we call dissimulation. However, however, having said that, some scholars have mentioned that if you are under the threat of your life being lost, and I believe this is even mentioned in the Quran, if you're under the threat of life being lost, you, you are allowed to, to say, hey, I'm not Muslim. I, I actually don't believe that stuff. You, you could say that in that specific situation. But beyond this, it's not allowed. Allah right. actually compels us and he commands us in the Quran, speak the truth. Yeah. So as Muslims, we, we don't go around uh, uh, teaching that line is okay just because someone is a non-Muslim. No, you have to be under the threat of life. And in what context is this, right? Some early Muslims were captured, physically captured and put to the sword. So there is a specific uh, like like historical basis for this. And if you think about it, I, I tell Christians all the time, uh, have you ever seen the movie uh, Inglorious Bastards? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right? Long time ago. Yeah. What would you do if you are Jewish, you know, brothers and sisters in your basement or in your attic and the Nazis came to you? Would you tell them, hey, I can't lie. I can't lie. Then even in this situation, they're downstairs. They're downstairs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Of it's under I, the threat I, I of life. Lie. Yeah. Right. So as a Muslim, but, there, but there's a there's yeah. a there's a hadith. Uh, uh, if I if I'm correct, there's a hadith of one of the companions of the prophet who said that he feared for his life, and I don't know the exact hadith. And it, but um, but this story, he was uh, in in fear for his life. It may have been Ali, uh, radiallahu anhu. Um, it may have been him, but um, or somebody else. But the the point is, is that you know he said, listen, you know I was. He came to the prophet, peace be upon him. He said, "Listen, I I feared for my life, and they they told me to mm -hmm. bad mouth you." And and he said, "Did you mean it?" He said, "No, I I didn't mean it." He said, "No, this is fine. You know, it's all good. It wasn't in your heart." So this this also plays to the whole like uh, Rafidin. There's no compulsion of religion, so I can't force someone to leave uh, a faith or to give me money or something like this or whatever. I can't force mm -hmm. them to do it or to not do it. You know. It is what it is. You, you, people must have their free will and free choice. Okay, I agree. Let's roll, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. al my brother. Before dawn till uh, after dusk, I prayed five times a day to Allah and recite those pray prayers that I did not understand what I was saying, but out of fear, I just prayed and prayed. During the month of Ramadan, I fasted 30 days. You do not eat or drink during the whole day. That's again before dawn till after dusk. Sometimes during the summertime, it's about 14 hours long. It was hard, but we did it because um, as a Muslim, we do not know what is going to happen to us at the day of judgment. Allah will hold a scale and in that scale, he, he put the good deeds on the right hand, the bad deeds on the left hand. And uh, I tried with this ritual, I tried to score good deeds that I have more good deeds, but I never knew how much of this would be enough. And as Shia Muslim, we mourn ritually in anniversary of the death of our imams. The men get together in a room, they dim the light, someone recites the eulogy, provokes the crowd to beat themselves, weep and cry. That's how we're gaining points and how we self-punish ourselves that maybe one of these imams intercede for us at the day of judgment. Wow. Yep. Yeah, we don't, we are Sunni Muslims, alhamdulillah. I can see why he, so the thing is, right? He's saying this is so problematic. We want, some, we want another man to intercede for us on the day of judgment. But you believe Christ is going to intercede for you. And you believe he was beaten for you. It, it's not like you've changed beliefs. You've just switched Persian Islamic beliefs in that, in some sense to Greek Persian beliefs. You, you've not actually made a big change. You, the same way that you ascribe div, divine attributes to the imams, you attribute it to Jesus. You haven't made yep. a switch. For me, exactly. this, this person, if this is what he genuinely believed, went from kufr to kufr. It, it didn't. It, he went. He didn't go from being a Muslim to a non-Muslim. It's just as simple as this. And the thing is, if his understanding of Islam is this terrible, I'm really worried about his understanding of Christianity. 
Because the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, historically, the Christians in his region, the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Christians, do have penance. They do have to do works to earn the grace of God. Roman Catholics yeah. as well. So it looks like he converted to the more recent form of Christianity, Protestant Evangelical. But that's not historical Christianity. So congratulations, yeah. you went from you know mushrik to mushrik. What, what's what's the <laughs> next step you did? I would like to hear. Brother, they are literally, unfortunately, and I you know just certain terms that we can't use here on YouTube, but Sunni Muslims, among which that sister with the hijab, the one who. Uh, at least given the evidence as it's been circulated publicly, if she was murdered, this sister, regardless, was a Sunni Muslim sister. Sunni Muslim sister. And the Sunni Muslims that protested on her behalf were killed. The Shi'i people, some of them may have been killed, right? The, 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 their government is repressive. We, we agree with this, right? They hurt all peoples. So they Aladdin, targeted oh, Sunni sorry. Muslims. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, pa no, I, you I have to take a phone call. I'll be right back, Brother Isa. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, Aladdin says he was a uh, Rafidi Shia. He was not Muslim because uh, Rafidi uh, Shia are not Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Aladdin, by the way, uh, send me your phone number, inshallah, in, in my email, please, inshallah. Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me come over here to the uh, comments for a second. This is this is what I'm saying, like you know, like when people say, "Oh, I left Islam." I was like, "Did you leave Islam?" Like when when we say you, you left Islam, are you talking about Orthodox Islam? You know, the, the the belief that we have, you know, as Muslims who believe in Quran and the Son of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, you know, and 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 uh, the companions and those after them and those after them. Like, is that the Islam that you left, or is it some other? um you know islam right uh, to them what they believe right so like uh like nabil Qureshi, he's a ahmadiyya muslim right suppose this is what they call themselves ahmadiyya muslim no it'd be like no you you know you're ahmadi muslim you know you're not a muslim or excuse me you're ahmadi you're not a muslim right because you you don't believe in the quran you commit kufr you disregard the verses of allah uh, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you say that someone came after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, uh, Ghulam Ahmed. Like, really? If you read the Quran, it's very, very plain to see that no one comes after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He is the seal of the prophets. It is what it is. Herself in our, in our chest that we bruise and we bled. We beat ourselves with chains on our back and with swords into our head. And uh, we shed our own blood. And this way of uh, sanctification, we, this is the way of sacrificing ourselves and shedding our blood to score points in order that we may be guarant uh, granted the Jannah, the paradise of Islam at the end. And uh, I mean, just the stuff that this guy is saying, like I, a bunch of the stuff I've never heard. Like seriously, uh, some of the stuff I heard, you know, like the beating of themselves and the, the 12 Imams and uh, how the imams will intercede for them like i've heard these things before but you know shedding of the blood and that this shedding of the blood kind of uh uh it's kind of like a christian belief right i would think so Did, didn't jesus shed his blood for the remissions of sin i mean that's what they believe right what was Asia? i can't hear you I'm back. Sorry about that. Alhamdulillah. All right, let's roll. Bismillah. Oh, by the way, salam yeah, wasn't... to everyone who's joined us. Uh, so you've got a nice bump in the views. May Allah preserve and reward you all. Amin. Amin, amin, amin. The shrine in the city of Mashhad. And I was praying, but my prayers weren't answered. I went to this Muslim scholar. Yeah. And I asked him, Yeah. Sir, how much more of this do I need? Bro, look at his yeah. face, bro. I can't with this guy. <laughs> but but we know what we we know why they weren't answered. He's praying uh, to a man. 
We get yeah. it. it. It's not going to put into a shrine. Isn't going to benefit you. So that's really like. So here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. If you th if if praying for a man doesn't work for you, do you think praying for another man is going to work for you? No. Just don't pray to any man. Pray to the Lord of men, the Creator of men. Yes. He's he's making himself look silly. But let's continue. You have anything to add, your brother? You said. Uh yeah. Uh very quickly, I think. Uh... There was a, a, a super sticker, a super chat from one of the... Uh, here we go, right here. From Android Phone. I apologize, brother. I did see it. I just forgot to uh, to bring it up because he jazz was talking. Um, My bad. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so Android Phone, the, uh, Android Phone uh, thank you for the $5, or excuse me, five pound super sticker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I mean, I mean, cool. Why, why my prayers are not answered? And he told me, son, you're not worthy enough. You need to do more. And I asked him, how much more? He said, that's up to Allah. We do not know. After I finished high school, um, I joined the Revolutionary Army of Iran. At age 19, they took the devout Muslim soldiers to, a, uh, to join us to a movement that was called Path of Light. During this time, they took us to the war zone between the two countries of Iran and Iraq. And there, um, uh, in the place that tens of thousands of Iranian gave their life up willingly in jihad to defend Islam, to defend their country and advance Islam. There we, I reunited my spirit with the spirit of martyrdom and also to fight the fear of death, to fight the fear of dying for Allah. They put us in empty tombs and grave during nights. It was pitch dark and it was very That must have been a uh, horrible experience. What do you think? To, to be put into a hole in the ground? Yeah. He wasn't buried. He just lied down in some dirt. I know. So it's it, it's uh uh by the way, guy, that that's called a foxhole. Yeah, I've been in plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, I can tell that we can see that, brother. You said, uh, if if dirt scares the guy, the, the and yeah yeah literally. Well, no, an em he probably calls it an empty grave, but it's probably like a hole in the ground, right? When yeah. you do basic military training, you have to do this as well. So the thing is, and other people are mentioning it as well. I have brother Mumsy's around this one, mashallah. Probably training. It's called training. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Christians do training too, just, just so you know. So I, I don't understand this. He's link. I think what he's trying to say, what what he's attempting to do is to show that Iran is a bad country. This 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 video may have like political implications to it. And when they do the asylum claims, right? They have to make it seem like they were up to the most nefarious things possible. By all definitions, this guy, I mean, if he's posting pictures with guns and he's part of the revolutionary guard, they commit atrocities. And if this person was a part of it, may God deal with him. Like yeah. genuinely, right? He'll have to answer to Allah for this. Mm -hmm. Because they killed Iraqi Sunni Muslims during that war. And I think they even persecuted some of their own Shi'i people because they didn't want to fight, right? So it's just a really unfortunate thing for this person to be propagating. And I, I feel sorry in one sense, because this video is going to influence many Christians to have this very perverted understanding of Islam. That's not authentic whatsoever. May Allah oh, guide Allah. such a lost soul. Yeah, okay. So uh, generic name, thank you very much for the uh, $5 super chat. Um, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. I mean, and I mean just just to be very, very clear, this is not EA Dawa. Guys, uh, I'm my own entity. Um, okay. So is Ijaz, alhamdulillah. Um May Allah bless together. brother May Allah bless brother Khalil from EA Dawa. Amen. No, no, absolutely. Um I just I just want to get that straight. I, I've done work with uh Khalil in the past, but I wasn't EA Dawa. Okay. I, um I'm not Ea Dawa. I'm Isa. Yeah, Isa Dawa. It's missing an S. It's missing an S. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isa. Right. <laughs> That's probably what he meant. We're making excuses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, one day, brother Khalil Allah can join us on these streams as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. We, we could, I think just yesterday was it yesterday day before I was on another stream with him. Beautiful brother, and we're always happy to do streams with other brothers. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, uh, could I answer a question that I see in the chat? Yeah, uh, uh, generic name. Thank you again. May Allah reward you. Amin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Ijaz, why did you grow your beard recently? That's a good question and a bad question, but everyone is allowed to ask questions, right? Um. So for uh, 
just to be clear, I suffer from several illnesses, at least more than one disease. So, uh, comorbidities is what the t medical term is. And some of these mean that I have peeled and cracked skin that you know, blood comes out of sometimes. Now, currently I'm facing a different issue. You can see that my skin is turning purple and my cuts aren't healing for those who want to see, right? Like I got scars on my hand and on my arm, right? It can look strange to some people. I'm going to show you. So for some of us, for a very long time, I was not able to keep a beard. Otherwise, it would crack and bleed. So, yeah. alhamdulillah, we tried something a bit different. And it's holding. I can't promise that this is going to hold. Because the day it bleeds, I have to shave it again and put the medication again. But different corticosteroids and different medications we're using. I have to see my dermatologist again soon. And inshallah, things work out. It's probably not, <laughs> but we we can hope, can't we? I think we can hope. Or maybe one oh, day, yeah, inshallah, I can have a beard as nice as Isa's. <laughs> inshallah, <laughs> may Allah make it easy on you, brother. I mean, well, yeah, I mean. Uh, let me see. Someone's I hope I answered heard. that question and uh, it helps someone. Uh, by the way, guys, if you see like Muslims without beards, right? I know that it comes from a good place to like encourage them to have it. But many people do have dermatological issues and they'll just be shy about it. They they may not be able to tell you or they don't want to tell you. So advise them and drop it or, you know, but don't make them feel bad or guilty that they can't grow one, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we uh, this is one of those, okay, this is one of those cases, first of all, you know, and, the, and look, just to be funny, right? Jesus said it himself, right? Take the, uh, the log out of your eye before you, you know, try and take the speck out of mine. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus say that Matthew seven one to two, I think. Yeah. But so, but so most Muslims about, that mm. yeah, but by most That's Muslims right. ask this, brother Isa, they they're coming from a good place. It's just that uh, some of them are, brother. Some maybe. Some. I, I, I try to make excuses, but it, it just depends on how people come off. You know, uh, I would say, I would say, before you criticize someone, you better be absolutely sure that you're correct. OK, I'm not like, look, we take criticism. I've I've made, you know, errors and I correct my errors immediately. Yeah. If I know that I've done something wrong immediately on the live stream, I don't care. I'll tell you, look, my bad. I thought it was this. It's not whatever, you know, Mel, I'll forgive me, you know, uh, and you just I, keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. But you better be know your stuff before you criticize someone. I'm not saying you need to know Islam 100 percent. I'm that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you know about like the grooming, right? What you're allowed to cut, what you're not allowed to cut. If you know this, you got that down packed, you know, you've done your research, then yeah, you can correct people because you know what you're talking about. And if anybody says anything, well, then you can always respond with them with information, with, with the knowledge that you have acquired, right? From Islam. But, but just um, be sure that you know what you're talking about because uh, some people just cannot uh, grow like beards, right? Mm -hmm. Some people cannot. And like, like for example, Hamza Yusuf, he, you know, they give him crap because he can't grow, you know, the, the beard. And then he just kind of grows the goatee and people give him crap about it. And he's like, bro, I, I, I can't grow. I, you know, I can't grow it. You know, all I can grow it's is tough. the goatee, right? So, uh, so I think FB says their father-in-law uh, used to have a severe skin disorder. that just led them to ask the question. SubhanAllah. I actually know a brother, a relative. Um, he had severe eczema. And on his hands, he would only wear long uh, sleeved t shirts, brother Isa and shirts. Mm. Because if he took it off, you would like it, it genuinely, you can see that he was worried uh, about people seeing these things. So I used to actually make the effort to shake his hand openly in front of everyone because people tend to think if it's on your skin, it's contagious. That's not how it works, it really isn't. And for okay. brothers like that, I make sure I actually go out of my way to hold their hands. Right? That might seem strange. Don't, don't clip that. But I'm saying, saying I will tackle you, you Jazz. If I uh, maybe right, but this is the <laughs> thing, right? Uh, so people would just be surprised, and you know, we share the love, inshallah. So guys, uh, and even sisters as well. I know some sisters that if they keep a hijab, the 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 the, the, the any headwear that they have causes them causes them to go bald. The hair just falls off. So for some of them, you know, not all Muslims have specific circumstances that the fiqh has ease for them. 
right? We yeah. teach that difficulty begets ease. Like if you're on the verge of death, yeah, you might have something that is not permissible to eat normally to sustain yourself for life. Or if you're dying of thirst and you find wine or something, take just that amount which can keep you alive. So, you know, we work with what we have. And for any Muslim out there that is ill or unwell, Brother Isa and I pray for you. And we ask that everyone prays for you. May Allah heal us and guide us and keep us in the truth of Islam. I mean, I mean. I wanted to uh, highlight this real quick. Uh, Isa, there's a niche market in Germany, uh, in, in German and Austrian churches who intentionally give preference to Iranian, quote unquote, refugees if they convert to Christianity uh, and become open critics of Islam. Authorities found out. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and we know this stuff happens. You know what I mean? And don't get, don't, I, I don't want, you know, these expo slums, right, thinking that, you know, we, we have it out for them. Look, there are people who are genuinely misunderstood something or, it, it could be that man, man, their parents were probably really harsh on them and they kind of took it out on Islam and they leave us. I mean, these things kind of happen and all we can do is try to shed a light, you know what I mean, to, to these types of problems. So let's get back to the video. I think we've been rambling on for, for quite some time. I know Allegation Hunter is probably sitting here somewhere. So he's he's wanting to like, get back to the video so I can clip it. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyways, let's get, let's get to it, inshallah. Uh, you were muted, Ijaz, by the way. So, yes, may Allah bless brother uh, Allegation Hunter. This fantastic yes. work, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And yes, I did see EA Dawa in here, brother Khalil. I don't he see left one comment. No, I highlighted his comment when he. Here he is. Oh, here it is. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not him. That's not it. It's the, it was this one. Oh, yes. Wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Khalil Allah is doing well. Smashed Samuel Green. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yes. I moderated and if that you, debate. I forgot that actually. May Allah bless you both for the hard work that you've done for that debate. I mean, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. You gotta, you know, when you moderate these types of debates, you really, really gotta like be unbiased. And it's easy for me because you know, I when it comes to like having a fair fight, for example, like I'm gonna let people have a have a fair fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna try to, you know, pick sides because it only looks bad for, for you know, whatever side you're on, right? Anyways, yeah, it, uh, it's really mm -hmm. tough to moderate. I'm not gonna lie, it's really tough. And sometimes you know I actually like, give more preference to the opposer. The yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I always I, and I like I don't do that to like screw over Khalil. Like, no, 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 that's not it. Because I don't want anybody saying Isa was a bad moderator. He he was completely unbiased and he had Khalil's side the entire time. And no, no, no. I was like, Are you sure you're done? Do you do you want an extra minute to expound? Do you want this or something? You know, just to make sure, bro. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. All right, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's, uh, how much longer do we have on this guy? How much? Uh, I don't um, think I can listen. I don't think I can listen to this guy for fourteen more minutes. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not. Just uh, okay. let's do a couple more minutes here, inshallah, and then we'll okay, move to inshallah. the uh, to the next uh, person. Inshallah. Put us in those. And, and by the way, my my kids are running around, so sometimes I. I turn off my camera or i'll mute okay. myself so if you see that guys uh, i'm not anyways let's get to it. empty tombs for us to fight that fear it was a scary moment but that's how we, they prepared us for the ultimate cause and the ultimate sacrifice for islam when i left the army i had one dream that we i get the opportunity to fight for islam and die in jihad uh, and allah may uh, may will for me that our country fight against israel or america that i can join that war I remember during the month of Muharram, one of those months that uh, we go and beat ourselves and self-punish ourselves, nine days in a row, every evening for two to three hours, I beat myself so much on my chest and on my back with chains that I, on the 10th day, I was so broken and I was so bruised that I could not get out and go beat myself more. And on the 10th day, I was... <laughs> okay. It's, the, it's, it's like... The way he said that, bro. <laughs> the way he said, look at his face. He, he looks really uncomfortable with all of this. Uh, Miskeen. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. First of all, I'm not beating myself for, for nobody else. Like, it, this is crazy, man. Like, you would really <laughs> have to prove it. You know, like, 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 okay, let's say supposedly there was this uh, beating in Islam, right? Like the orthodox view of Islam. I, I'm going to be like, bro, prove it to me. Like, this, this would be a problem to me. This here is a moral issue because you're doing harm to yourself, right? 
So Allah tells, commands us not to do harm to ourselves. So if this is the case, then that, I mean, you're doing harm. So you would be, I mean, this is, this is what I'm saying. Like you would, really, I, I believe it's a moral issue and that uh, you would have to absolutely prove to me that beating oneself is, there, like, uh, you would have required, to. Be, required. Whatever the case is. Obligatory. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, subhanAllah, uh, and this is a reminder for Muslims as well. Sometimes we, we grew up in an environment where we believe it's Islamic, we're told it's Islamic, but we don't actually seek Islamic knowledge and clarification. Now, if this dude went to many madrasas, as he claimed, right, then I think it's a basic thing, Brother Isa, wouldn't you go out of your way to study and ask these questions to the scholars that you're like the, the strange thing is he, he, ac he actually mentions that the one time he went to a scholar was when he went to a shrine and the other time he asked a question was to his mother what yeah. was he doing in the madrasas he went, went to then uh, why wasn't he asking the 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 sheikhs and the muftis and like i know they don't have that in she uh, beliefs but understand they have like mullahs and they have like uh, different things, right? I uh, forget the specific term, but if that's the case, why don't you go to them? Why are you asking your mother, right? Why are you asking some right. dude at a shrine? Why aren't you asking the scholars of your religion? So, like, like Brother Isa, uh, if, if it's possible, right? Yeah, uh, a claim was made by one of the Christians on a stream that we did recently, right? Mm -hmm. And I countered that claim during the stream, and I actually showed you the deal from an exchange I had with a Sunni Islamic scholar with double PhDs that validated my claim. This is not the case, Brother Isa. Did no. I not share with you with the, the, the Lille? No. Right? Right. So a lot of people, like as Muslims, we must be active. Go ask the scholars. This is why they were there. Right? At the I3 Institute, I could call up Sheikh Osta right now and ask him for the Lille on something, ask him for advice on something. Right? There are other teachers, Molanas, Muftis that we go to, that we seek knowledge from. So, for people like this who who don't investigate and study their religion and then give it up for something else, then I think you've lost an opportunity here. And the thing is, you can be pretty well sure that some of these Christians would not memorize a single ayah of the Quran as a Muslim, but by God, they'll, they'll, they'll memorize some kind of song that they sing in church. It's too oh, difficult yeah. for to memorize Surah Al-Fatiha, but you're going to go into church and you're going to be jamming with the band on the stage. You don't need no song to hold paper to hold on to. I can't right. tell you how many times because I went to Catholic school. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I almost almost got myself in trouble there, right? I can't tell you how many times some of my Christian friends respectfully said to me, "Oh, I can't memorize things of prayer. That, that, that that's a bit rough." Then they'll go and they'll say the Lord's prayer, right? No, no yeah. issue whatsoever. Or, or but when we sing this song, um, uh, oh, oh, I don't want to sing it live on stream. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm banned on YouTube. But there were so many songs that they sang for the morning mass, the morning ceremony. And I would turn and say, guys, like, you got to be consistent just a little bit here. I think it's called The Song of My People, or, uh, The Song of the Islands. Song of the Islands uh, Church. Let me just see if I have it. Uh, That's why that's that's one of the things that you you know what I do to uh you know whenever we get a, uh, talking about language and how we memorize mm -hmm. the Quran and this is a really really big thing not only in Islam but uh you know with the Jewish community they try to memorize you know uh their religious texts because this is part of the command of Deuteronomy chapter six verse four is that this should be impressed in their hearts right not verse four it's like verse seven if or it's like verse five or seven of deuteronomy six but um but this is what we were supposed to do so so what i do so this is what i tell the christian they're like mm -hmm. oh you know you don't even know um uh, you know the arabic i'm like okay yeah i agree that maybe i should learn arabic i should right yes however i memorize parts of the quran because this is what we're taught right how about this recite to me the lord's prayer and then they'll go mm -hmm. our father who art in heaven and i say no 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 I said, give it to me in Greek. And they go, well, I don't know the Greek. And, and someone who actually knows the Greek will start reciting it in the Greek. They're reading it, though. And I said, no, 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 stop. I want it in Jesus's language. Aramaic. 
I want you to recite the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic or in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're, they're completely stuck right there. They can't go past the Greek. And even when they go to the Greek or even the English, they have to go to the text and actually read it. You know what I'm saying? We've memorized this. It's in our hearts and in our minds. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Does that make you eternal though? Now that you've no. memorized it? doesn't make me eternal. I wish it according did, to, but it doesn't. According to the astaghfir. Uh, messing with you. Uh, let me just put Not up eternal like that. Yeah, eternal I know, I get it. Another I'm meaning. Mess, you know I'm saying? messing with you. I'm messing yeah. with you. So I'm going to put up a comment by Matt Schneider. He says, Ijaz, did you ever debate Dr. James White on textual issues? I hope you took some of his criticisms to heart. Um, there is never a criticism in terms of textual criticism that I can accept from Dr. James White because I've never gotten anything incorrect in regards to the Greek New Testament that he's ever corrected me on. On the other hand, there's I, I may use arguments that he uses against the Quran. I abstract them and apply them to the Bible. And in one instance, he told me that was wrong. And then I simply said in return, that's your argument. I never got a response on that particular claim thereafter. So <laughs> what but, but that's the thing, right? A lot of people think that they understand textual criticism and they don't. And yeah, I'll even give an example here. You know, uh, Dr. James White likes to say that uh, Uthman burnt the copies of the Quran. That that's why you guys have you know, a really preserved and strong tradition. No, even if he didn't burn it, how would that affect me 500 years later? 600 yeah. years later, 700 years later. It doesn't. If people were willing to make up whatever they want and attribute it to the Quranic tradition, one event of potential burning doesn't stop everyone else from doing the same thing. So it's a really bad claim. And I've, you know, I've said this to him on multiple positions. And uh, I don't think he's ever dropped it. So if he can continue making claims like this, then I have the ability and in the light of consistency, I can abstract those same arguments and apply them to the Bible. Had it not been for the uh, uh, councils in Africa, I think it's the Council of Carthage, I think, 393 or 397, so now if done the Council of Carthage, you wouldn't have the Christian canon today. And that's a factual statement, right? People forget that Christians were burnt in modern-day England for daring to translate the Bible from Latin into into any other language, particularly English. So let's not have this conversation, and I would prefer to challenge him this face-to-face, -face, but I promise you, I don't think Dr. James White will ever stand on a stage opposite me and dare to debate the topic respectfully, with all due respect to him, uh, uh, with me on the Bible or the Quran, which is the better preserved book. It, uh, they, let they, me, there's just oh, no sorry. difference. I'm sorry, but are you are you done? I'm, I I apologize. I thought you were done. Go ahead. Good? No, go ahead, brother. Yeah. So so he he baited you into that, right? That's not the topic for this stream, but he baited sorry. you into that. No, 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 brother. He baited you into that, and he baited me into this. I have to respond to this. So he says, Isa, is it more productive to chant something in a language you can't understand, or say a prayer you can't understand? I'm gonna chant something for you right now. I'll do billah. So uh, Allah says in the Quran in chapter four, one hundred and fifty seven of the Quran. Let me give the effects too. Hang on. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa qawlihim inna al-katalna al-masih Isa bin Maryam ar-Rasulullahi wa ma kataluhu wa ma kataluhu wa ma salabuhu wa lakin shubbiha lahum wa inna al-lazina akhtalafu fihi la fi shakim min ma lahu bihi min ilmin illa tibadan wa ma kataluhu yakina so what Allah says here let me turn this off now so what Allah says here this is chapter 4 surah al-nisa uh, verse 157 of the Quran Allah says, and for their boasting, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. They killed him not, they crucified him not, but it was made to appear so. And those who argue for the crucifixion, like you, uh, I'm sure, like you, those who argue for the crucifixion are in doubt about it. They have no clear knowledge except the following of assumptions. Pure conjecture, thun. You have nothing. 
right? So the Quran confirms this. And then he says, he reiterates and says, certainly they killed him not, or they killed him not for certain. There was no, they, they don't know. You don't have, the Christians have no solid foundation for their belief. And this is what exactly what Ijaz does all the time, literally all the time. And I love listening to Ijaz because he, he, like, he completely demolishes these points. So when we ask questions like, uh, you know, who wrote the Bible? Who had their hands in it? It's for a reason. We're not playing games with people, right? We're not, you know, it, this isn't supposed to be, you know, a, a, a tit for tat. You know, a this for that. No, it's it's not supposed to be that, although it turns out to be that, unfortunately, right? Like, we'll have debates with Christians, but because of the Christians and their manners, or lack of manners, uh, rather, right? It turns into this, and, I, and I'm not making excuses for Muslims or anything like this. I know that sometimes Muslims get out of pocket and do things they're not supposed to be doing. But, um, but seriously, you know, uh, I see this from the Christians a lot, and a lot of it comes from the fact that they don't, they cannot handle the questions that we bring. They can't at all. I mean, trust me, they, they try to act cute, you know, cool as a cucumber, but it's, it's really, really hard. Are you aware that uh, Dr. Ehrman caused the crucifixion? This is okay. Ijaz, I'm going to allow you to look. This is not uh, Matt. If you're, uh, uh, let me see. I don't know whose channel he's on. Is he on your channel? Okay. He's on your channel, Ijaz. I have no uh, idea. Yeah, he, he's tell? on. Because I'm, I have both streams open on, on my, oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at the chat. So Matt, uh, if you, if you guys don't mind, come over to Isadawa, inshallah, and and subscribe. Whenever we go live, you're more than welcome to come up and ask your questions. Seriously, this is not uh, today's topic, and you know we were kind of, uh, 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 you know, it, it's all good. You know, we were, we were uh, kind of distracted by the questions. But I thought they were important uh, uh, questions that needed to be answered. And this is the last one that I'm going to allow. It's uh, all good, brother. You saw. No, 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 no. I, please, please, please. I want you to. Please okay. respond to this, inshallah. Yeah. Just long and short, there's a reason that he says the death of Jesus is one of the most certain events in history. It's simply because if Jesus was a man and he lived, then he must have died. That, that's it. <laughs> That, yeah. That's like the basis. And because many Jews were killed at this time um, by the Romans, it's considered almost normal um, for them to have you know, been killed by the Romans. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying in, in, with historical considerations, um, there's a, we call this a continuity. I'll, I'll just write it in the chat. I'm sure you know the word continuity. And by continuity, all we mean it's no reason to be sorry. It's all good. A continue. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Child. Continuity just means that if something is uh, like if you don't have specific information that something has happened to a person, but the background general data infers or implies that the that, that 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 thing could have happened to that person, you can say in history that it did happen to them. I'll give an example so no one's confused about this. I don't know as a fact that Isa Dawa owns a smartphone. I don't know that. But in the year 2022, it's a fact that the vast majority of people own the smartphone. I can infer that if Isa Dawa is, has an online presence, if Isa Dawa yeah. has a TikTok, then it's more likely than less likely he owned a smartphone, right? I'm not saying not saying uh, had one in his possession, I'm saying owned, owned, right? So that's a specific claim. The same thing with Christ Jesus. We have nothing contemporaneous to his own time that tells us that Jesus the Christ was crucified on this particular day uh, because of these particular circumstances by these particular people. We do have traditions after. And so we can say reasonably that if Jesus lived, then he must have died. And if he lived at the time when the Romans were regularly uh, crucifying the Jews, which led to multiple genocides, 
then the Romans most likely killed Jesus from that historical perspective. But that's a very you know, generalized claim. When you then say you go a step further and you say you can base your theology or your soteriology from a, a, a generalized event with no specific details, then that becomes the problem. And so the thing is, had the crucifixion of Jesus played out in the same way the narratives in the Gospels do, then no doubt Dr. Ehrman as a historian would be Christian today. But there's a reason he's not a Christian. He says it's because of the problem of evil and hell. I get that. But I'm saying if he as a historian was so convinced that the narrative leading up to the crucifixion and after it is true historically, then he would have been a Christian and he isn't. So in his capacity as a historian, he doesn't believe in Christianity or that the particular narratives in the Gospels are true. So he could be a historian and he is, that's his professional uh, you know, um, opinion. That, that's what he, yeah, like his professional role, if anything, yes. And he can have a professional opinion about Christ Jesus, but as a Muslim, I don't simply look at it as a historical investigation. There were theological implications for me as a Muslim. So yes, I can look at it with plainly historical eyes, and I don't think the crucifixion of Christ Jesus, that specific event happened <clears throat> from a purely historical lens. Yeah. But if you ask me from an uh, if you ask me from a, a theological lens where I believe that miracles do and can happen, could I believe that Christ Jesus was saved by God? Yeah, right. And I can infer from the historical data that there were certain elements at his time that wanted to harm and kill him. But did they? I don't think so. And if the Quran happens to mention he was taken up into heaven, I have no problem believing that because even a historian will say, I'm sorry, the standard historical method does not give us the tools to investigate a miracle. So Dr. Ehrman may believe in the crucifixion as a historical thing, but he will not believe in the resurrection, nor will he believe in the ascension. Nor will he believe in the feeding of the 5,000. Nor will he believe that when Jesus was baptized, you know, God spoke from the heavens and, you know, today, uh, this is my son today, I have begotten the two different things. So we've not been inconsistent as Muslims, but I think when Christians demand that we follow the opinions of, of, of historians, they're creating a problem for themselves where if I grant you the crucifixion, now if I hold it to the same standard, you need to reject the resurrection and ascension. Will you be willing to do the same? And I'm going to bet no. And if I say why, you'll say, well, it's a miracle. How do you know? And I'll say to you that your standard, not mine. I'm, so I'm sorry, Brother Isu. No, 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 you're good. I'm going to clear this up real quick. Uh, generic, we were talking about something uh, on the last guy that we were, or the, the, the yeah, the, the guy that we were reviewing, and Ejaz made a comment, and I said, just like how it says in Romans chapter 2 about how the Bible is written on your hearts or in your hearts, depending on, I guess, how you understand it. But uh, that that's all I meant. We don't, we don't, believe, I'm a Muslim. Why would I believe this? Or why would I think this? Um, and I, I do apologize. We, I did have a super chat here from, um, Oh, there's a super chat. I probably missed it. Yeah, I did miss it. Uh, I apologize. Let's so, get uh, to the first... end, inshallah. Let's let's get that at the end, inshallah. If, if possible, well, no, because by that time the super chat is going to be oh. all the way to the top, and I won't be able to get back to it probably. So uh, it's just it's just very very quickly. Let's just try to be very very quick with these okay. uh, super right. chats, inshallah. So uh, thirty seconds. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, what are the levels of proof that persuaded people to believe in the mess messianic claims of Jesus? I don't think Jesus made mass messianic claims like historically. Um, I. I believe as a Muslim that Isa alayhi Islam was the Messiah and claimed to be the Messiah. But if I take my Islamic belief out of it, we already are aware that at the time that Jesus lived and preached, there were multiple messianic movements. So, so for them to believe the messianic claims of Jesus, for me as a Muslim, would not be a problem. But what does it mean to be the Messiah at that time? It means being the religious authority for the Jews occupying the office of the high priest, right? Now, Jesus didn't claim to be the high priest, to be, to be clear here, right? Uh, at least in the Jewish Bible. I don't think, so in the New Testament Gospels, I don't think that he did, but he does claim to be their Messiah. And so 
it's a historical conundrum, I think, for Christians in particular to tell us why the Jews would have accepted him as the Messiah. What messianic office did they see him holding if the Messiah for them, the only purpose of it is to lead towards his own crucifixion? For us, the office of the Messiah is not to lead to the crucifixion, but to be a religious authority for the Jews. So uh, I hope I've answered the question in some way, inshallah, multiple angles, Diana. I, I hope it uh, helps you. But the gambit. Yeah, may Allah Tomorrow I have a for, the, uh, five, uh, for the five uh, SGD. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean, I mean, I mean. All right, uh, Brother Gambit, tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, tomorrow, and I keep saying inshallah, because Brother Isa, would you believe me? Every time I've scheduled the Trinity Talk Tuesdays, it's either a medical problem, a prescription problem, or I have to travel somewhere like four or five hours away to... It's it, it always gets messy. So I'm saying inshallah because I have no plan to leave to go to the doctor tomorrow. But I think last week, like one or two hours before <laughs> I had to leave, I got called to the doctor's office. So <laughs> inshallah. Let's wrap this one up, Brother Isa. I know I know that Brother Isa in particular, um, the next uh, ex-Muslim claim is one that's very close to his heart, something that he identifies with, I think, on some level. And I'm really um, fascinated to see what. Uh, so, in in terms of the the last guy that we just watched, um, to give our quick quick analysis of jazz, okay, um, I I believe that uh, it. Okay, maybe maybe he was uh you know Shia, right? Was he Muslim like an Orthodox uh, Muslim? I don't I don't think so um uh, obviously the the claims that he was making we had a lot to say we only did what maybe like seven minutes of his video and we had to move to the next because it's just too much too much stuff just like too many errors you know beating yourselves uh thinking that these 12 imams are going to intercede for you just, just a just a bunch of different stuff i do believe a lot of it is is like i said it's all emotional uh stuff so that's that's my little uh bit there yeah, if anything, Brother Issa, I agree with your general analysis. And I think maybe for the future videos, maybe we can come up with a system. We say five strikes and we move on to the next one, right? Five yeah. strikes, we, we catch five lies, five misconceptions, and that person's testimony is invalid. We give up on them. At least yeah. maybe yeah, maybe that might work, inshallah. We'll talk about it. But yeah, that's yeah, but a, a lot of uh, so, some of it, some of it has to do with the actual claims that they make. Do you see what I'm saying? I so okay, I get so, you. I so get then you. that way we can uh, actually refute that. But I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like if 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 someone is just like, look, man, you, you're, it sounds like you're lying. Like yeah, we can be like, listen, he, he, I don't think he was a Muslim. He, it sounds like like he's lying. And then we mm -hmm. can just move to the next. And then we can just you know, you know, give him the uh, the strike. <laughs> Gambit yeah. says five strikes is very terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right, let's I'm get to the next guy because uh, I think you're I'm... gonna have fun with this one, uh, inshallah. Well, I know you did. <laughs> okay. Anybody kid you or fool you into thinking Islam is the religion of peace? <laughs> religion of peace. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Three reasons why I, for some time now, I am no longer. I, I don't know why, but it, it seems like uh, he just got off of a, a very small bus. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to take my time. I just have one request because we have to adhere to YouTube policies as well. No mockery about the gender, guys. And maybe he's like, uh, he might have like a medical issue from what I can tell. It may be intellectual as well, short bus most likely. But let's see, brother Issa, let's see. But guys, just a note. Be very careful in the comments, please, okay? And yeah, yes, I yeah. Th that, was, that was a really bad fake laugh. Uh, but let's go. Let's roll. Bismillah. Yeah, so um, you, you'll see. He sounds a little coherent. Um, but let's, like, the, the further you go along, like That's I said, charitable. I have to review this. That's yeah, coherent. So. Yeah, bad starts already. Let's see. Uh, you'll, you'll see as the, as the video progress, inshallah. Okay. Part of this tyrannical uh, belief system. Uh, you be your own judge, you make your own judgments, uh, I, you know, it's up to you. All right, so 
Uh, I have some notes here, so I'm gonna read a little bit off of them. So reason number one, and I, by the way, I highly suggest you stay until reason number three because I've got a painful story to tell you, okay? Personal story, all right? So anyway, number one, intolerance of others. And it's really hilarious to me when uh, Muslims try to make it look like that Islam is the religion of tolerance, it is the religion of peace, uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, lived uh, alongside uh, Christians and Jews, uh, which, by the way, he taxed them. All right. Anyway, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, your government and my government taxes me, uh, I think, on a daily basis for absolutely everything. Um, but intolerance, I would say that we're tolerant of people to a certain extent. Uh, I mean, if you're doing things that are immoral, just just go behind closed doors, man, to where people can't see you doing these things. Right. I'm not going to tolerate, uh, you know. Two men or two women or or any other thing. I don't want to say other words, but um, yeah, you do many I would be kind. Of yeah. Yeah. I don't I, I, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate this sort of behavior in front of my children. I, I, I'm sorry. I have four daughters Four, Right. I I'm not going to tolerate that at all. It's absolutely uh, disgusting but there that's not the only thing there are other things too right and maybe foul language um you know in public uh doing things you shouldn't be doing in public it necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be on a uh you know uh uh sexual level right it could be other things too but uh ijaz yeah like okay so i mean one of the famous clear uh, like to begin with because there's so many i have so many thoughts it's like constant stream but the first thing is everyone is taxed for everything. Right? Yeah. That's what governments do. It's how they raise revenue to provide goods and services. So as a Muslim, Islam requires that I'm taxed if I reach the Nisab level. It's called zakat. My, my, my payment into the tax system of Islam is required, obligatory, unnecessary if I reach that, that monetary level of savings right, and assets. Now, for the non-Muslim, this is called the jizya. They have their own tax as well. And this is called the protective tax because we're saying that us as Muslims, we are willing to put our lives on the line for you as a non-Muslim. I am willing to sacrifice my life for your protection, for your ability to have a Absolutely. home and to live safely. Right. And so the thing is, what you're, you're we're not forcing you to pay, but what we're saying is, if because you can choose to leave our domain, right? Where we're meant to protect you. The thing is, you're you're paying into the system as an investment for the goods and services and protection that you will get. And in the case of Islamic history and fiqh, it has been the case that many of the ulama, many of the rulers suspended the jizya for some of the people. Maybe they're too old, maybe they're too poor, maybe an agreement, a treaty was signed. You have so many considerations about this. But if I were to flip the question, which non-Muslim government does not tax the people? I would like to know that. If taxation is the problem, at least give me an example of a non-Islamic government, a non-Muslim government that does not actively tax its own population. So already your first argument is pretty bad. But the second argument that he made, so his first point, is that Islam is intolerant of other what was it? What did he say? Did he, did he use the word religion? He, just said, he, he was just saying, uh, generalizing, just saying that Islam is not tolerant. This is this is okay. Okay. So the thing is, liberalism teaches that you can't be, uh, to be tolerant. You have to be intolerant of the intolerance. Yeah. Right. I right? understand. <laughs> no, this is so this basically is what, like let me be to, uh, intolerant, bro. <laughs> no, that that's the basis for liberalism. It's that at, there's at some point if you tolerate everything and everyone, and every belief, then you have to tolerate someone who is intolerant of you. And that becomes a loop, right? Then you can't be intolerant to the intolerant. So there is a limit. This notion that, that all peoples must be tolerant of all things, no one accepts this. Liberals will say we have to be intolerant towards the conservatives. Uh, 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 secularists will say we have to be intolerant towards certain religious practices. We don't live in a world where everyone is tolerant of all things in all places at all times. And this is ultimately 
neither an ideal nor something which which is realistic. This exists in some kind of fantasy world. It just happens to be the case that there are limits to things. And we can give an example, a very simple example here. Brother Isa, can I come to the United States and break its, its criminal codes? Am I allowed to do that? No. They stop you at the border. They, they will actually, you can, you can try to get a visa to any country and they'll ask you on the visa form, have you ever been convicted of a crime? So the, the thing is, you could have been convicted of a driving while intoxicated DWI 20 years ago. They'll still deny you entrance and say, nah, buddy, you, if you break the laws in your own country, you ain't going to follow the laws here. So there are standards that you have to hold up to. And we do, even, in the, even in like here in Canada, the United States of America, particularly in Canada, there was a Jewish sect um, um, that migrated to Mexico at some point. Don't ask me about Isa, it's a long question. I, the strange thing is they even end up in Trinidad. So they got deported from Canada. <laughs> I'm not laughing, right? It's just, just, I am laughing, but not because, not because they got deported. It's just that they got deported from Canada to end up in Trinidad. For Trinidad to deport, to, to get deported from Trinidad, you've got to be quite special. I'm just going to say, say this, <laughs> right? This is the funny thing to me. They got deported from Trinidad, and I think they ended up in Mexico and they got deported from there. Now, that that the people in that group can say Canada was intolerant of us, Trinidad was intolerant of us, and that these two countries were anti-Semitic. Mm. But here's what the law teaches. At some level, you can do your private religious practices. At some level, you can even do them publicly. But at the point where a person without consent uh, exhibits bodily harm, and they don't have autonomy as in to move about by themselves freely and independently, then then the government has the right to 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 at least make sure that no one is being harmed. So we understand this. And what do we call this? We call this the police service, right? If my neighbor was you know, subhanAllah, in Guyana, if people don't know it's a country in South America, hold on. Guyana, which is a country in South America, well, South America as well. Guyana shouldn't exist. Uh, there was the story, <laughs> subhanAllah, of, of a young man being kept in a chicken coop in his parents' backyard. Now, here's the thing. If his mother had, I think he was even over the age of 18, his parents said it was fine. It's part of their culture and their practices. But legally, the police had the right to go in and take him out. So the thing is, this is a really, really, really bad argument. And I think this person, they, they may want freedom, bodily autonomy, these types of things. But in the United States today, Brother Isa, on the federal level, is abortion not allowed? Right? In the United States now. Yeah. So here's the thing. That same guy... Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. But that guy now, that, but, sorry, I don't want to misgender, my bad, because that could have been a crime in Canada recently as well. I don't know what gender this person is. I'm just going to call him Mr. X, if that's okay, because he's ex-Muslim. Just call him X. X. Don't, don't say Mr. I, Mr. X. Oh, dude, the pronouns are going to get me. I'm not, I'm like, I'm not trying to be funny. I, it's I hard. It's to hard to, to rewire your brain. Yeah, it, it's going to take some time. And please, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be intentionally <laughs> offensive. Like I call brother Issa, brother Issa, even though he's never asked me to call him brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. Okay. okay. Right. So <laughs> for this person, unfortunately, I just think that they live in a world where they have a misunderstanding of what tolerance is. And brother Issa said, you know, would you accept it for people to do explicit acts publicly. In front no, of your you children. can actually right that that's actually a crime. It's called indecent exposure, right? Yep. Right? It's a crime. Now that person who's doing the crime can say, but it's my body, my choice, and doesn't work that way. In the public space, the the rules change. In the public space, you have to respect the privacy and boundaries of others. It may be a public place, yes, but just because it's public does not mean you can do whatever, however you want. 
That's just mm-hmm. not the way it works in the real world. So hopefully well, this place- uh, Well, you're allowed to do whatever you want, so long as whatever it is that you're doing doesn't invade someone's personal space. It's you're Cause not harm. Uh, causing any harm or anything like this. So so yeah, um that that was a good uh, uh response to that point. Let me just get this real quick. Matt Schneider, he says, guys, I apologize for distracting uh distracting all good. from the intended topic. Uh, I should have saved the question for the you know Q and A and make Whoa. make I save you. Is, okay, uh, Matt, take is it this easy. Dude Canadian? Is this yeah, guy Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, mashallah. You know, oh, mm-hmm. such a tough fella. No, you That's can say good, mashallah. Matt. You can say mashallah. Matt, if, Canadian, if you're mashallah. Canadian, if you're Canadian, tomorrow I'm gonna go live. I'll be more than happy to answer um, textual criticism questions on my channel, and you're more than welcome to do so. Inshallah. Uh, yeah. inshallah. So thank you for the uh, five dollars, uh, and may Allah guide you to Islam, uh, Matt. I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, let's roll. let's 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 roll. Ah, uh, Snoop is here. Snoop is here. You know this guy, yeah, uh, Isa? No. Uh, when you finish with this stream, just go Google on YouTube. Snoop, uh, Hyde Park speakers. Go and just do it. Uh, Snoop Hyde. He's very, <laughs> he's very famous. Uh, he's as articulate as the person that we're reviewing. Oh, right Alhamdulillah. Now. <laughs> Uh, and right now we have 158 people watching between both Ijaz's channel and myself, um, and my channel. So guys, if you're on my channel, please go over to Ijaz and subscribe, inshallah, which is his channel is called, uh, Calling Christians. So go over there and give the brother a, a subscribe, inshallah, and like inshallah. it and like his stream as well, inshallah. Jazakallah. May Allah reward see, no, you see that? You see, you said they know Snoop very well. <laughs> I've probably seen him before. I watched a lot of Hyde Park. Anyways, I'm not let's sure. Get, let's get to the video. I'm not, Lisa. I'm not sure about this one. The big red thing in the top right hand corner. Let's roll this one. Inshallah, inshallah. Yes to me. That's hilarious because for every one seemingly tolerant thing, Uncle Mo did, he's done, him and his boys have done 10 intolerant things. All right? Uh, and a lot of times those seemingly intolerant actions were just for political reasons, all right? So uh, I'm going to read you a verse straight from the Quran. The Quran is the equivalent of the Bible, the Muslim Bible, okay? That's the word of God. Uncle Mo went to the cave. He channeled the word of God. <laughs> so uh, the verse, I'm going to read it in Arabic and I'll translate it for you. And you can go and uh, look it up yourself. So it's from a uh, sutra, surah, sutra. Called Al Bayit. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pause. Pause. Sutra. Sutra Al Bayana. Okay. He, no, notice he, I, I think the person corrected themselves and then said Sutra again. Muslims in the chat, do we know the difference between a Sutra and a Surah? I do. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to message something to Brother Isa backstage right now. Okay. On WhatsApp, Brother Isa. And promise me you won't read it until I ask you to. Deal? Inshallah. Right. right. Can you share? I really, I again? really, really, really have to go and pray Maghrib, inshallah. So long. So if, if you want to, do you want to just kind of talk to the chat for a minute? Yeah, just like five minutes. Sure. Inshallah. Sure. Inshallah. sure. Go pray, inshallah. Go pray. I'll be right back, guys. Um, And then once I come back, we'll resume the video, inshallah. Oh, wait. I need but to yeah, pray go- Maghrib too. Whoa, I need to pray. Okay, so so do you want to... Okay, how about this? Look, look, it's on, look, I've already... I'm under wudu and everything, so I'm just going to go in and, and... Okay, and go pray. quickly. Go, 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 go. And then, and then we, we can swap. Continue. And then we can swap, yeah, inshallah. 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 Let me just double check. I actually forgot about that. All right, guys, let's see here. Let me see some of the chat messages. Sutra, sutra. Uh, let's see. Yeah, mashallah, brother. Halabi is a wonderful brother. I've uh, we've had some good interactions, and I've spoken with him. Uh, he has a lot of uh, really good, well-researched papers, and um, he provides a lot of dates, a lot of quotes, and highlights on his Twitter account. Um, I think he was recently suspended on Twitter, but he may be back. He's typically known as the face palming lion, and uh, I really do love uh, that brother. May Allah preserve him, as well as brother Khalil. Um, from Kalamology, a very uh, handsome brother, mashallah, very hardworking and very intelligent. And we're happy to see such uh, capable representatives of Islam 
you know, may Allah preserve these brothers and keep them on the right path and forgive them for any of their misgivings on us as well. I mean, um, let me see some of the comments here. Uh, no problem with that. You know, you guys can come take over. I, I don't mind. Hold on, I saw a message earlier. Miss, if I can just get back to it. Uh, Brother Firdaus, um, he asks, at Ijaz, you were pretty quiet with Rob yesterday on the historicity stream. What are your thoughts on him trying to merge uh, his worldview with the Bible? So we did a stream with EF Dawa on Isaiah 53, um, trying to understand or qualify this as a messianic prophecy specific to the Messiah being God who will suffer. Um, while I appreciate uh, Rob's uh, um, uh, contribution to the stream, there was not much for me to interact with because he already like accepted that Isaiah 53 was not really about a God to suffer. And he did accept that this was a later view developed by some Christians. So because that's his basis of understanding Isaiah 53, he already agrees with our position on it that it does not refer to a God Messiah who suffers. So I like everything said after that, I did not, for the purposes of the topic of the stream, um, I did not have to pursue it or to interact with it. And I think Dr. Imran uh, had a really nice conversation with him on some of his beliefs, but they weren't all directly relevant to the topic. And I've spoken with Rob before, and I have like you know, we've had conversations like these. It's just that I wasn't interested that, or rather, not captivated by all the other details unrelated to the main topic. Um, so that's like the thing to be quite honest I like Rob nice guy and I'm happy to have conversations like that but one of the things is I have to be considerate of my own audience and if I were to pursue some of those points um, I think if we go into onto theology it would have become and uh, as much as I respect my audience I have to be decent with them and it, many of the complex terms and ideas associated with that topic it's not something that the everyday Muslim would get a lot of benefit out of. And uh, um, I didn't really want to prolong it as much as I needed to. Dr. Imran pursued the points that he believed were relevant and uh, purposeful and meaningful. And I listened to that conversation, mind you, but I got something to eat in the meantime. Took some of my medication, prayed, came back, alhamdulillah. It was a good um, a good conversation nonetheless. Um, yes, it is Suva, not Sutra. I, I don't know how that guy messed up that. And brother 1878, this is how I know you're not married. You don't know what that book is. Huh? I know what you're trying to say, but I know you don't know what the book is. Uh, how would that make his mind dirty, uh, brother, uh, Tachi Koma? Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Indian book. <laughs> Inshallah, just looking at the comments. Um... Ijaz, when Christians say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the God of Islam is arbitrary, what do they actually mean? From what 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 Christians tend to mean with this, sorry, by this is that God um just forgives sins however he wants, and that he's actually supposed to punish all sins before uh, like God can't simply just forgive. He has to punish the sin, or you have to be punished for your sins before you can have forgiveness. We don't teach this. Punishment is not required for each and every sin. Yes, you can be punished, don't get me wrong, but Allah is not required to punish you for your sins, or all of them, or some of them. It's really up to His will, uh, up to His irada, right? And so we hope for His mercy, and He's told us that if you repent, you'll get His mercy, and if you seek forgiveness for your sins, He will forgive you. So we have a path to forgiveness, it's not arbitrary. On the other hand, I would counter-argue that the Christian notion of forgiveness is arbitrary because regardless of the sin that you have done, Christ has already died for it. That for me is arbitrary because you're not then incentivized to actually be remorseful for your sin. You know, technically, the Catholic, Oriental, Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, you have to do penance. That's way more closer to what we believe. So it's typically the Christians who are evangelical Protestants, they will use this argument. I'm Ijaz, back, what do you th All right, thank you, Isam. Very short of time, I'll be...
Uh, I don't know what he jazz just said. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what do you think of God logic calling you a non-Muslim? He took fear to you. Yeah. That, uh, see, that's the thing, man. Like that, that's what I was like trying to tell him before. Like you can't, you can't be saying that about Muslims. Like that's quite disrespectful. But yeah. Did uh can somebody tell me if E Jazz went over um Ferdos, uh super chat by any chance? I know he uh he put something up. Uh I guess it doesn't matter. I'll put it up anyways. Uh for the dose. Thank you again for the uh five SGD. I don't know what country that is. I apologize. Uh, thank you very much. Jazakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I mean, Ijaz, you were pretty quiet with Rob yesterday on the historicity uh, stream. What are your thoughts on him trying to merge the worldview with it, merge his worldview with the Bible? Yeah, that's definitely a question for Ijaz. Oh, he did go over it. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right, alhamdulillah. Oh, Singapore, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Uncle. Let me turn my camera on. That would be nice. All right. Yes, yes, I have a new mic. Well, newish. It's my latest mic. <laughs> Why does it sound good? I hope it does. Um, it's not the most expensive, but you know, it costs some money. I wish I didn't have to spend it, but I did. Alhamdulillah. How long have I been a Muslim? Uh, Twelve years. Alhamdulillah. Since two thousand and ten. Just over twelve years. No, no. This uh. uh uh, this is the second one that we're doing, and then we have one more after this. No, I am not Mexican. Uh, do I look Mexican, bro? Seriously? <laughs> I'm Puerto Rican, man. Isidale was my favorite snack. Yeah. Uh, are you going to ever do the gauntlet with Khalil? I'm not too sure, brother. It, it just depends. We're kind of just doing our own things right now. I have a lot of favorite snacks, uh, Harry, by the way. What's the difference? <laughs> this guy said, what's the difference? Well, Puerto Ricans come from Puerto Rico, which is a very, very tiny island. And then you have Mexico. Mexico is a huge land. It's in uh, South America. That's where Mexico is. All right. I'm Puerto Rican. I don't speak like, Orale vato. like I don't talk like that. Nosotros hablamos así, tú sabes. Como, como los puertorriqueños de, de Borinquen. Tú sabes, pura cepa, ciento por ciento, puertorriqueño. <laughs> you know what's the funny thing is uh, I had some Christians call me uh, uh, a racist uh, Mexican term because I'm from South America All right? so like if you can get confused for Mexican and I can get confused for Mexican there's a big question mark if when people know what an actual Mexican person is just want to point that out there uh, one of the uh, what was I going to hey, say Jess, can you I, please tell these people that you know, it's, it's quite disrespectful to call someone Mexican when they're not Mexican or Puerto Rican and call someone Puerto Rican when they're not Mexican. <laughs> they, they, they truly don't understand. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Uh, they might not mean disrespect by it. Like, you know, I get I get confused for being Jamaican sometimes and I get confused for be, being a Guyanese as well. Um, subhanallah, it's uh, it's uh, really fun. Um, someone just said that a Mr. Santa Claus just made a video about Brother Isa 30 minutes ago, and he made fun of Ijaz as well. C congratulations for him. I mean, between him and myself, only one of us has pretended to have a PhD online and, you know, committed academic fraud. <laughs> the, right. So, you know, alhamdulillah, between him and I, only one of us have graduated from a university. 
Between him and I, only one of us has certification and qualifications in more than one language. Between him and I, I have the decency and respect of multiple institutions behind me. He can stay in the cheese factory and cut cheese all day long for as much as I care. Good luck to him on that. I'm sure that's very intellectually stimulating and it shows in his work. Uh, good luck to him and, you know, all the best in all the nonsense that he does. Uh, is Ijaz white? You're looking at a brown guy calling him white. Clearly brown. Clearly brown. Wait, can you put me next to Issa? Where's your face? There's your face. Guys, who is whiter, Issa or me? I just want to know curiously. Who, who do you think is whiter, Issa or me? This guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everyone that answered Isa is going to get timed out in the chat. Um, <laughs> Isa is clearly Chinese, Austrian. So not Austro not Austrian, but Austrian. We're invited, we're inventing new countries today. You, uh, you look like brother. I look like I'm brothers with this dude. Really? You would disrespect me that I'm messing, I'm messing. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Uh, I would love to be the brother of Isa, and we are in terms of Islam, alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, we're our brothers. Oh, SGD, I promise I'll get to this question on tomorrow's stream. Habi. Okay, I'll answer it quickly. But um, we're going to have to go back to the, um, what do you call it, Lisa? Mm. The rest of the stream. So let's quickly, uh, Ijaz, regarding the, by the way, Jessica Lohairan, regarding the traditional attribution of the Gospels, the certain writers before these traditional attributions came to be, were there alternative theories to attributions for their authorship? So one, we don't have a lot of surviving information about the authorship of the Gospels. Secondly, communities seem to have developed over time, attributing certain traditions to certain apostles and disciples and presbyters in the early church. Now, it just so happens that at some point in the second century, there was a movement from saying the writings of the apostles to saying Matthew and Mark. And we have this with Papias, and later we get this ascription to, to Luke and to, to John, right? The difficulty we have is that all the manuscripts with the titles and the names attributed to these people come from the 4th century and beyond, right? So it's very difficult. Like if something says according to John, which John? If I say according to Mark, which Mark? So here's what we do find. We do find differences in who they claim wrote the Gospel of Mark, for example. We do find differences in who they claim Luke was. We now some they will agree it's a phys, it's it's a physician of Paul, but in what context and how do they know that? They will say, well, this guy was called Luke, and Luke says he wrote this. Therefore, they must be the same person. It's on a same name basis yeah, that they make. Uh, sorry, brother. Let, let 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 this be a, a preamble tomorrow, brother, please. Inshallah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, so guys, I'm sorry. No, go go go. Finish. I know. I know you want to wrap it up. Please, God. Yeah. Final thought is this is why we say that they were homonymous names. They're written in the names of people who are already popular within the Christian tradition. So, if someone today said uh, uh, Isa Dawa said something because Isa Dawa is already popular, it does not mean the attribution of that statement to him is true, but it does mean that the community would associate him with some kind of statement like that in the field of Dawa. That's all. Yeah. And, and, and guys, uh, please try to be kind. Uh, these types of questions really bait e jazz. Okay. So try, try to hold these questions. He's going to do, inshallah, tomorrow he's going to do his Trinity Talk Tuesday. So, you know, you know uh, whatever questions you're asking that, that you want to ask him about the Bible and stuff like that, bring it up tomorrow, inshallah. You know, inshallah. And, and inshallah, I'll be there. Not not with All you right. on the stream, but that I'll be watching. You could pop up, inshallah. Try to attend. Maybe if you want to come back. Oh. You're allowed to come by. Okay. Uh, no I'm, I'm going to send you a message, brother. So can you share the screen with the, uh, the, guy that, uh, the person that we're reviewing? Uh, their testimony. Can you share that screen again? Now, I'm going to send you a message, Brother Issa. You can't read it out. You can't look at it until I ask you to be, uh, to see it for yourself. Agreed? Yeah. Agreed. Okay. But I do want your, your unmuted reaction to it. Here we go. All right, you're allowed to look at it.
Where'd you put it? Oh, in the uh... what's up, bro? What's up? You guys are gonna get his unfiltered reaction to my message. Okay. <clears throat> so uh what he jazzed it was our Don't... Well, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. But was that funny? Was that funny? Yeah. It's it's a real question, isn't it, Issa? Yeah. It's an inside right, joke. We know, but you don't know. All right, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. <laughs> Inshallah. Let's get it popping, yo. Yep. Yo, he jazz is silly as hell. <laughs> That's bro. what he says, too. <laughs> I-A-N-A. Al-Bayna. All right? I'm going to read it in Arabic first, and I'll give you the translation. Inna al-lazina kafaru min ahli al-kitabi wal-mushrikeen fi nari jahannam khalidina fiha ulaika hum sharru al-bariya. Which means... The worst of those creatures. who are... The non-believers. So kuffar means there's somebody who's not believing in Allah, not believing in the true one God. So those who are disbelievers, uh, whether they be the, the, the people of the book, the people of the book are the Christians and the Jews, or the mushrikeen. The mushrikeen means uh, the, the po po polyistic people, people who, like Hindus, for instance, Buddhists, anybody who, uh, let's say, believes in several gods, right? So Hindus would be considered the mushrikeen, right? Mm -hmm. I'm glad he got that right, that they believe in multiple gods. Yeah. Got that right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which means in, in uh, hell. Khalidina mm -hmm. fiha means they're, they're just staying there. Okay, they're, they're pre pretty much staying there forever. Uh, means those are the worst of the bunch. You see? What's now, the creatures, creatures? Um, there are at least, at least, I just picked one. It's pretty straightforward. Let's pause. Like, it's just... Let's pause. Uh, what's the problem with that? Like, like Islam is not a... Islam is an so Islam, Judaism, like the same religion she just mentioned, Islam and Judaism and Christianity are what we call exclusive religions, meaning you must accept certain beliefs to be considered part of the, those faiths, right? So it's exclusivist. Some Hindu religions are exclusivist as well, like to be a Hare Krishna on some level um, and to stay at their temple. I forget where the temple is. You have to spend at least two or three years in that place. We call that religious exclusivity. That's fine. That's okay. And the reason that these people are considered the worst is because they live a life in opposition against the commands of their creator. If you think about it, if Brother Issa, if you have children and they disobey you, would you not call them the worst children? They live a life that insults everything that you've raised them to do would you not say you're not my uh, you know you we don't maybe cut maybe you know technically, it really depends right? it really depends on what what it is that they've done but yeah. these people like the uh the the polytheists or the children of israel these people who have thrown the the torah behind their backs right uh these people who break the sabbath and things like this yes of course you're the worst of people because if you don't follow the commands of god then, or you don't believe in God or something like this, this is the worst, or you associate partners with God, this is the worst that you can do. Yes. Right? So people people think that this isn't a sin. The the disbelief in God, disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not believing is a sin. Right? It's one thing, not one thing. Look, we are put on this earth to use our minds and to come to know God. This is what our purpose is, to come mm -hmm. to know him. And Allah says in Surah Al-Dariyat, if I'm correct, verse 50 or verse uh, 51, that he did not create the jinn kind nor the mankind except for one purpose, and that is to worship him. That's it. But Brother Isa, to answer this person's question more specifically, I'm just going to put this ayah of the Quran up here. This Quran 5.8, right? Well, typo there but you guys get it right so it'll matter do not let the even if you hate the people because they commit the worst of sins do not let the hatred of a people lead you to be unjust or to commit injustice towards them yep Allah, Allah commands you be just that is closer to righteousness and then Allah qualifies it he says and be mindful of him surely Allah is all the way not of what they do he specifies of what you well, you all do technically, but you do, right? So understand this: even if we consider people to be the worst of sinners, 
it does not justify us being unjust towards them. Yep. This is the difference, right? I can believe that you've committed the worst of sins and you are a sinner and you deserve to be called a sinner. If you're a murderer, do we say, oh brother, we forgive you. You're, you can murder any people that you want. I have to respect what you did. No, the, your creator can label you however he wants. If he created you, why can't he name you? Why can't he describe no. you? That's his authority. The second thing here, just quickly, because I know we're short on time, is uh, 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 even if he, uh, Jesus Christ in the New Testament, I think it's Matthew chapter 5, right? He says, anyone who does away with the least of these laws is the least in the kingdom of God. Mm. That's called the worst of the creation right there. Yeah. Literally, literally. So, so, subhanAllah, what, what the person is saying does not invalidate Islam and it does, not, it does not take away from the truth of Islam, but it teaches us that they, they have a very weak understanding of what religious exclusivity, exclusivity. I can't say this word. Exclusive, I got the right thing. Exclusivity, you said it right. Yeah, something like that, right? That applies to most monotheistic faiths. Mm. It's always an in group and an out group. So I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Any things to add here, brother Isa? Yes. Well, yeah, it is an injustice. It, um, because you're 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 lying, right? So uh, let's say, for example, you, you know, someone's in court and you lie and say, "Yeah, this person, you know, killed this guy. I saw him with my own eyes, and you know, you didn't." Yeah, it's an injustice because you're, this guy is going to be dealt with in a particular manner. That's not so nice. Um, but all right, let's keep going, inshallah. At least a minimum. 10 to 30. Those, those facial expressions are, are priceless, by the way. 30 other verses in the Quran that pretty much say the same thing. It says, if you're not okay. a Muslim, straight to hell. You're just straight to hell. There's no hope for you. You go straight to hell. If you're a non believer, if you're, if you're a Christian, Ahlul Kitab, or a Jew, or if you're a Mushrik, so if you're a Hindu, Zoroastrian, uh, if you worship mm -hmm. idols, uh, point being, if you're not a Muslim, you go to Nine yeah. Jahannam, straight to hell. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like it's right there in the Muslim Bible. In the yeah, the Muslim yes. Bible stuck for But but <laughs> we, but yeah, so so yeah, you, you go to hell, bro. Uh, um if you don't believe, and this is what we believe, right? If you don't believe, it shouldn't matter to you either way, right? But he thinks yeah. it's false. Like, okay, if yeah. like you can't be offended that that I believe that you're going to a hell that you don't think exists. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it shouldn't offend you. Like exactly. you're literally calling my religion. Right, right. Like you know, you disrespect the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You, he does. This individual feels like it's okay to express that disrespect. So if it's okay to that, express his own, sorry, their own disrespect towards Islam and Muslim beliefs, then should they not also expect to be judged for what they say and claim? Can we not also disrespect and do these types of things? We can criticize and be critical as well, but we have to do so, brother Isa, and I'm sure you agree. With principles behind us that are consistent and yeah. that are authoritative. Yeah. May Allah it, guide you know us from such things. I mean I'm sorry, brother Yusuf, please continue. No, you're good, bro. Quran. And then some Muslims will come in and, and say, Oh, we're tolerant. And they go to Western countries and they're complaining how their uh, people are being intolerant of them. Guess what? Your the world is your mirror. The fact of the matter is you're intolerant yourself. So because the world mirrors your internal state. Your intolerance reflects in, in the outer world. Yeah, you, and you've answered this earlier. Um, we have the right to be intolerant of things that are immoral and uh, that are just plain wrong, right? That's that's our yeah. right as religious people from uh, as any people, Islam. well, I, 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 any person. But this is our religion, right? So this is what we believe. Then, bro, then then just don't do it. I mean, you don't have to be a Muslim or a Christian or an atheist or anything. You walk out on the street. And do just commit an immoral act, something that that you know is gonna, you know, not be go over so nicely with the populace. You'll see that they will call you out on it, whether they be Christian or atheist. Maybe not all of them, but there's gonna be some people. We see it all the time. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, I'm talking, Islam's tolerant. All right, number two. He he needs to stop with those uh emojis. <laughs> Um, and oh yeah, another thing. So when I uh, first immigrated to Canada, I, I was raised, grew up in the Middle East. Um, my mother tongue is Arabic. Uh, 
I had to, uh, whenever I would shake the hands of a Christian, so like anybody that's like white Canadian, I would have to wash my hands after. Be- that's, that's a damn what? lie. That's a lie. Um, he said that whenever he I touched heard it. anyone, like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, that's a what? straight up lie. I've never heard anything like that. I mean, it's one thing if if someone, you know, probably had like bloody hands or something and, and you know, you you held their hand or, you know, you were fixing them up or something, whatever the case might be, and you know that they had something nasty on them, then yeah, go wash your hands, right? But you don't have to make voodoo because you touch someone. That That is ridiculous. Well, well, maybe he came here during COVID. That would be normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a strike, uh, Gambit. Because they're considered dirty people, right? So there is so much no, tolerance not. to anything other than Muslim. And that's just facts straight from the Muslim Bible. Not facts. Straight from the Quran. Not from the Muslim it's just Bible. just facts. Like, you can't argue not with facts like, again. How are you going to argue with this verse and 30 other verses just like it? Uh, there are not 30 other verses just okay. like it. <laughs> no, He's lying, um, it bro. is uh, extremely outdated. Uh, extremely. So uh, the Quran is actually not outdated. The Quran, all the rules and regulation apply even till today, from the time of his revelation till day of judgment. It will always be relevant. This is what he doesn't understand, and this is what we believe. Obviously, from the uh, you know, we have a moral anchor. It's a law. It's what's in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is what we follow, right? So is it is it uh, immoral to, you know, have a preference to a particular group that you're not supposed to have preference uh, to? Uh, yes, it's immoral because God said so very, very plainly, and it will remain like that until uh, day of judgment. Ijaz? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, alhamdulillah. I'll give you some things that actually, like, you're supposed to do. Uh, if you're in a Muslim country that is actually applying the, the Sharia law, the, the law, the Islamic law. So, um, yeah, you're, by the way, if you have sex outside of marriage or you cheat, let's say, on your husband or your wife or whatever, you are, according to the Sharia law, you're supposed to be stoned to death. Stoned to death. So you get a group of people, okay? They get stones and they just start throwing stones on you until you die. Okay, let's, yeah, let's yeah, Ajaz, hey, speak on this, please. <laughs> So and and yes, I agree. Don't don't do it in a Sharia compliant, uh, so, so, so somewhat, so, right? Anyway, so here here's the thing: it's ridiculous to say that fornication, uh, and and sorry, viewing fornication and adultery that these it's outdated to view them as immoral. We can already see because of the data, uh, most young children today who grew up in single parent homes they don't have proper behavioral patterns associated with them because they don't have both parental figures present with them. So their ability to be successful in life, in many cases, is determined by the education level of their mother. So if a mother has to work day and night jobs in a single parent home, she's not going to be there and able to take care of her child or raise them or educate them in those essential three years. It's called maternal education. And so that child, literally because of the poor start to life that they had and uh, with no male figure or male archetype in their lives, which is consistent, um, they actually grow up with many uh, emotional uh, insecurities. They can develop what we call uh, neuroses. Uh, we typically say like mental illnesses, things like this. Or it is that their intellectual capabilities are quite limited because their parents were not able to teach them from a very young age. So they have to catch up. They they have limits in the way that they can process information. So Islam does not want this for children to be disadvantaged, to tell us that our ideas are outdated when we are trying to preserve the societal institution of the family is to hate children and to hate women, and to deny men from being the fathers that they should be. And I find that terrible. One final thing, uh, the hudud, the punishments in the Sharia, this is like 1% of Islamic law. When people say Sharia, they use this as a scary word. Sharia is Allah commanding us, uh, sorry, telling us that smiling is sadaqah. So if I smile, according to the Sharia, I've done sadaqah towards my brothers and sisters. It just means the body of Islamic laws, beliefs, and principles. That's all it is. It's not scary. And no, 
the the hudud can't be simply applied however and whenever we want. There were strict conditions for them to be applicable. And one of these conditions is that the hakim, the governmental authority of that region, that place, that territory, they have to want to institute these punishments. They have the option of not instituting the punishments for a myriad of reasons. So it's not like every day in Muslim countries people are being stoned to death. And the, the requirements to be stoned to death are such a high level, you really have to do something that is so publicly filthy and disgusting in front of so many witnesses that you will likely be arrested for indecent exposure. Finally, and I, I'm sorry, Brother Isa, for taking up the time, but finally, um, moral and immoral when it comes to punishments, this does not really, I, I don't think th this person has a fair judgment. Is it moral to let a person suffer in a cage for the rest of their lives and slowly waste their lifetime? Or is it more moral to have them die an earlier death, right? Um, the government, in some cases, has a lot medically assisted dying. A person can choose to end their lives if they so choose by their own actions and their own hands. Um, so th these arguments that this individual is making, I don't think that they're ethically consistent, nor are they logically consistent. No. And um, I just think it's really problematic. Absolutely. I agree. Not so outdated, right? I mean, it makes sense. Come on, it makes sense. Come on, say, I, I'm being too harsh here. Uh, in truth, I'm being too harsh. Come on. Come on. That's pretty logical. It's pretty logical if somebody's, somebody's committing adultery, having sex outside of marriage. It's only right that they get stoned to death, right? Come on. Come on. It's the spirit of compassion and love here. <laughs> so, um, another was, outdated... Was, uh, I think it's lashes in that case for two unmarried people. Um, it's only stoning. Yeah. I yeah, think I, it's think, a, it's I think you're right. A little bit of a, yeah. a little bit of a strange thing. A yeah, so for that, and that's what I understood. So for for unmarried peoples committing this, uh, from what I understand, it is lashes. lashes, and then for married people who do this, it's uh, a death. And it makes sense, yeah. man. You know, doing this is 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 very very horrible on the community, um, because you know once you get married, the the family kind of becomes, um stabilize in the community and doing this can cause rifts throughout the entire community literally throughout the entire community do you, do you guys understand how this mm -hmm. can completely you know uh shatter a community by doing this right um anyways Allah knows best indeed uh brother you said you want to wrap up here uh, we, we still have the other one do you need to go Ooh. Yeah, I'm running a little bit low on time. Um, okay, that, that's fine. Um, I guess we'll just, uh, uh, we, yeah, we can end it here. That's fine, brother. Uh, let's see. So let me, let me do this real quick. Like we, you can, you can wrap up the final one, uh, this, this, this person's video if you want. I can be here for that, but, uh, well, we, can we I... could probably do a few more minutes. We, we don't yeah. have to do the whole thing. Mm hmm. So if, if you want, we, yeah, we could just do a few more minutes, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so right. I think we can finish this one and we can do the third video. We could maybe add that to the roster for the next one. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. We could do that, bro. Uh, I apologize, guys. Uh, my, you know, we, we did a lot of talking and, you know, having to go. Well, I don't apologize for praying. It's it's a command. We're supposed to do that. But uh, anyways. Alhamdulillah. Is the uh, OG, uh, thank you for the $20 M Madagascar. Is that Madagascar? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so he's a he jazz. Uh, uh, anyways, man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I mean, he says he jazz and he said with another fire collaboration. Thank you, brother. May Allah reward you. Oh, no. I mean. Poopoo uh, is what is this? Uh, I'm gonna pause this because I can't I can't even read my own scribbles here. It took me like two minutes to read my own scribbles. So yeah, uh, if you're a thief, you're caught stealing, your hand should be cut off. Yeah, your hand, they should just cut off your hand. <laughs> you can see how ridiculous this is. You see how ridiculous this is? That's, I mean. So if I'm correct, the Hadood, yeah, the Hadood on this is, uh, if I pronounce it properly, is if Hadood. you're, huh? 
It's had singular hudud plural. But what do I know about Arabic? I think. Yeah, you don't know anything, ever, bro. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silent Aleph. What do you mean? Anyways, uh, so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so from what I understand, the punishment for for people who um, who steal for mm -hmm. the sake of stealing because they like doing it. Uh, yeah. They don't. They're they're not starving or anything like this, and they're just stealing to steal. Then yes, you know um, these people. Unfortunately, this is what happens. Uh, well, not unfortunately. Yeah, don't I'm, steal. But it, don't get it caught. It has to be. Yeah, but it, it, so some of the requirements, it has to be of a specific amount of a specific value yeah, amount. Yeah. Um, in some cases, it has to be repeatable offenses. Um, it has to be a specific type of thing that is stolen. Um, I, I I forget the witness standards for this, but let's compare this with with just with just like secular law in general. It is the case that some people who have stolen from like Walmart and other places, the police that came to arrest them ended up executing some of them, right? There's been yep. cases where fights broke out and they were shot to death. And in some cases, we find that the law is applied unjustly where if an African-American person were to steal something compared to a, a person of another ethnicity, we see that in the American judiciary and in many Western countries as judiciary, the minorities face the higher brunt of the law, 10, 15 years in jail, compared to fines for other people. So what is more just and unjust here? This seems to be almost ridiculous, this yeah. comparison that they're making. Yeah. And then so and then the other part of it is if someone who is stealing because they're hungry, hungry and they're trying to feed their families, uh from what I understand, the, the blame is now on the government. On the authorities. Uh, and they should because be. Because they should and provide. On the, yeah, the, uh, on the authorities. Yeah. And on the people as well. Because I'm, I'm you're sorry, supposed you to keep it out. Yeah, even in Islam, you're meant to be, uh, let him uh, who believes in Allah and in the last day be good to his neighbor. How can you mm -hmm. be good to your neighbor if they're starving? It's a communal responsibility as well. So That's here's cool. the thing. A lot of these people will will give you the, the 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 harshest example for the general application. But it's the opposite. These are exceptions to the normal practice rather than the standard for everyone. So this is ridiculous. It's a bit like me saying um, uh, uh, America is an evil place because one person uh, was executed by a state for selling cigarettes in New York. Right? Okay. Would that be it? This is called an appeal to generalization. It's a terrible claim to make for any people. So this has just been a, a clown, yeah. if anything. Yeah, it looks absolutely. like one too. <laughs> that's according to the Sharia law. Like that's the Islamic law. You know, a lot of Muslim countries don't do that because of how absurd it is. Okay. But they should be doing that according to Islamic law. There are a few countries that still do this kind of stuff. They're stoning to death and, and uh, cutting off their hand. But most don't do it. It's just like here in the United States, bro. Um, listen. If, if you don't want to be executed for treason, then don't commit treason. It's 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 so simple. If you don't want to ex be executed for murder, right, then don't murder. I, I mean, it, it's. This I is mean, what I would call a snowflake, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> Keep going. With because of the absurdity, you know, like it's like, can you even get on with the modern world doing these kinds of absurd things? You know, uh, I'm giving yeah. you what should be done according to the word. Of what did he say? I'm saying, yeah. No, what did he say? He says, can you get on in the modern world with these things? And the answer is yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. no, nothing about Islamic law takes us away from being in the modern world. And I think it's a bit racist to think that if people hold a belief, that they should not and cannot live in the modern world. I find that to be barbaric and derogatory in many ways. Um, this person is not superior to anyone else just because of what they think their moral standards are. And if I were to hold this person to their moral standards, I would say it's evil and wicked to allow children to undergo elective <laughs> surgical procedures that can change their lives permanently. I think Permanently. that's wicked and that's evil. I think it's wicked and evil to force women into uh, 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 remove their privacy when they need to attend to their 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 natural uh, biological uh, things, right? That they have to be denied 
their privacy and to be denied their own domains where they can be comfortable. I think it is barbaric, quite frankly, to force children in some cases to deny um, what they were born with um, in terms of their physical things. I think that this is very evil and wicked and we should not con uh, condone these things. So mm -hmm. their standards, I'm sorry, are not consistent, nor are they morally superior. Yeah, I find it quite barbaric that uh, women are, in every circumstance, or any circumstance, are not allowed to uh, be women. Reject uh, what's inside them, right? Uh, babies, right? Um, Whoa, yeah. No, because it because it because it depends on the situation, right? So we're 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 pro situation. That, that's my stance, right? It depends on the situation. Were you uh, essayed? Is that what happened? And then now you got pregnant, and and you know, can you, you die? Can you yeah, die can you die the... because of the pregnancy? Right. Like these things are, you know, it's it's pro situational. It's very mm -hmm. very simple. This is how we deal with uh, people and their uh, problems in Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Of God and according to the word of the uh, holy Uncle uh, Mo. So, who by the way uh, is most probably also a pedophile because he married Aisha, uh, and uh, I can't not gonna recall this. what age she was, either six or eight. Uh, he married, but, but if, hold on, but Issa, just quickly, if this person says we can't be intolerant of other people's beliefs, why should that be a problem for them? That's true. And the, someone says that this person became a yoga instructor. I hope they know what yoga comes from and what yogis teach. Right? Mm. <laughs> like, those beads around your neck, buddy, they weren't used for all religious things. Let's keep going. <laughs> give him a second chance or tell him why he shouldn't do this or give him educational material you just got off their hands all right if you're an opposite apostate meaning if you're a, if you're born muslim into a muslim society you're no longer muslim aka me and many others nowadays because of they realize how absurd it is uh you're supposed to be that uh, killed uh that's no. that's not true um not true. and i don't even think the quran mentions anything about these uh people who do this correct so for, for a person who apostate right but if someone leaves Islam, they leave Islam. How would you know? Why would you care, right? If the person is causing others or wants others to leave Islam and they cause social disharmony, it's up to the ruler to say, you know what? You're coming to treason against my people or you are caused, there's a word for it. Uh, uh, it I forget the crime that it's called. One second in English, I think it's called um, to break the peace. To break the peace, yeah, you can be arrested. Which your is mischief. Personal, yeah, your your or fitna, your, fitna. Yeah, your your part, like the police can literally arrest you for being offensive in a crowd. Your personal liberties are suspended. You are physically removed, and you can be forcibly put in a jail cell, according to almost all countries today. We just happen to have a religious understanding of this isolation from the public. If you cause public disharmony, now in this case. If you're apostate, you're apostate. No one cares that you're an apostate. Whatever you do in your private time, you're doing your private time. But if you publicize it, that means then you, you want it to be known. And if you want it to be known and you know it will cause social disharmony, then if the governing authorities decide, we'll give you the option, leave our community, because the community is built upon this belief, go to another community, go to another nation. People are allowed to do that. So this person... If Islam was so bad, why didn't they execute him in the country that they came from? Why were they allowed to come here? And when they come here, let's ask the question, can this person, if they are in Canada, and I think they said that they migrated to Canada, can they cause mischief in public? The answer is no, you will be arrested for this. So no, it, it's unequal skills that this person is arguing with. I yeah, think it's look, frankly uh, ridiculous. Double standards. Yeah, by the way, almost all the time, you go to Dundas Square, someone is being arrested for something, right? <laughs> You're not just allowed to say whatever, however, whenever you want. In fact, there is this very famous Islamophobe called Ron Banerjee, right? Ron Banerjee. You guys want to Google him? Google him. Uh, just, he's like one of these, like, like, uh, like uh, I would call uh, like uh, Hindu fascists or RSS-like type people who hate Muslims in anywhere Muslims are. 
And repeatedly, the Canadian government has had to arrest this particular individual, not only because of the threats he has posed towards the Muslim community and their safety. So being a, a person calling to the violence against Muslims can get you arrested. He's literally caused social disharmony to other non-Muslim uh, Canadians. And so the Canadian government has routinely arrested such a person, suspended his civil liberties because of the issues he causes in public. It has nothing to do with Islam or theological beliefs. If you're an idiot in public, any government is going to arrest you for it. It's just that simple. Right. No matter what country you're in or what God you believe in or whatever the case might be, you, you have rules and you have to follow them. All right. Let's not cry about it. Yeah, that's the punishment for you being an apostate. You get killed automatically. Okay? Automatically, you're supposed, to, they're supposed to cut my head, off, my head off right now. Nope. If I was living in a Muslim country that applies the Sharia law, which again, <laughs> many countries don't do that anymore because of how absurd it is. All right, so it's very outdated, so intolerant, outdated. Number three, violent in nature. You can already see some of the violent things that we talked about, but there is an inherent violent nature to the belief system known as Islam. And I'm going to tell you a story, stick around, a, a painful story in a second. I'm just going to talk about this a little bit. Islam, in its initial stages, spread through the sword. There's no way around it, folks. Okay? There's no way around it. The Muslims what? formed an army. Yeah, in, in Mecca, what, what swords did, did they have? I'm just curious. I'm he sorry? Said in, in, he said in the initial stages, the Muslims were mm. violent. When the Muslims were in Mecca, they were persecuted, boycotted, and many of them were actually killed. Sumaya, may Allah be pleased with her, one of the first martyrs of Islam, a spear through her, right? Bilal, Rajalahu An, hot stones put on his body, heavy stones, suspended to harm him and try to kill him, right? We were being persecuted against. And the thing is, you can't say to a persecuted minority, um, let them be persecuted. And then when they stand up, you think that they are the aggressors. The Muslims, for I example, do that all the time, brother. Yeah. I mean, the Muslims were the minority in Egypt up until the 11th, 12th, and maybe even the 14th century CE, despite Islam having entered and governed them since the 7th and the 8th century CE. Think about this. If Islam was inherently violent, there, there should have been genocide after genocide, and by the 9th century, no Christian should have been left in Egypt. Was that the case, Brother Isa? Mm -hmm. No. There were no I'm, I'm, I was a, I was agreeing with I know. you. I mean, uh -huh, yeah. like, yeah. anyway, yeah. sounds good. Christian's going to clip that, right? <laughs> uh, uh, think about that, right? So, uh, uh, ask, even, the, ask the question again. Yeah, Brother Isa, when the Muslims entered the lands of Egypt in the seventh century CE and the eighth century CE, did we commit genocides of the Christians there? Yes, we did not. Well, they're going to clip <laughs> that and say that, right? So you said we did not, just to be clear. So. Think no, about no, this. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the historical data is there. So, no, we were not violent, but Muslims are allowed to guard their domains and their lands. This is a lot like saying, you know, those, those, those Americans, right? They were really violent against the British in the initial stages. Do you hear what you're saying? Do you think about what you're saying? Did you think countries just magically popped up? Or is it not the case that communities came together and chose to say, this is our land and we will defend it? Mm -hmm. That this is our government, this is our area, this is our region, this belongs to us. It's my block, and son. Th that's the way all religions, well, not all religions, but this is the way all societies, cultures, and civilizations It happens have even developed. On, on even an individual basis. Like, you would go to school, right? That, it's happened to me that there'll be one kid bothering you and then when you react in such a way, who gets in trouble for it? They say both of you. I'm particularly you, the victim. Yeah, I'm the, I, right. Me, I, me. I'm like, what I do? Like this guy was, you know, uh, provoking me this whole time, and finally I snap, you know, or something like. No, this. not just <laughs> even provoking, right? There have been stories in, like, literally, like, st uh, not just stories, but like actual events have happened where children who were being bullied, like physically assaulted by bullies, one time hit the bully back, didn't even hit hard or won the fight. They just participated in it, Governor uh, tried to defend themselves. And how did the school apply the law? If, if either of you participated, you're both equally guilty. Mm -hmm. Is that just? No, is that it's not. Fair? Is that good? The answer is no. And even the police, for example, the police 
if they suspect, not even know, if they suspect you have a weapon on you and you make any kind of movement, will you not be executed? Awesome. Legally, could they not execute? And the answer is Legally, yes, they, they can. can. They have the authority yeah. to do so. Yeah. Right. And they're protected for that. Mm -hmm. So what this person, I'm sorry, to say that Islam is inherently violent, one, this is ridiculous, but two, Islam is an inherent religion where it sees its members as needing protection. And it will protect them. Simple as that. Alhamdulillah. We're almost done here. Me, they, they united. Uh, they went, they fought the Romans, they fought the Persians, uh, and yeah, they just did. spread Islam through the sword. Now, there's an argument pause, for this. Pause, oh, pause. you know, things are pretty violent. Pause. Pause. What, what are Romans and Persians empires of hugs and kisses? I, I could be wrong. Like, if I read the Hebrew Bible right now, the Old Testament, were they given <clears throat> hugs and kisses? But see, that, but, uh, no, they weren't. But see, this is the thing. So if I, I'm sure if we were having a conversation with this guy and we were to say, but hold up, those very people that you said the most the Muslims fought against were barbaric as hell. Right. I mean, they did the worst yes. of the worst atrocities. Right. And they would say, yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm sure he would say, yeah, I agree. You know, it was all barbaric. And then he'll, he'll probably I'm almost certain that he would probably try to give an example from today's uh, day and age. Right. Saying. Oh, but, you know, we've moved past that. Really? Over a million people dead in the Middle East? In, in just one country. One. One. And that's not barbaric? Why? Because you're not in the front lines? Because you don't see it happening? This is, brother, this is... Ridiculous. There is no way to justify, um, you know, uh, the United States or any other country going over into the Middle East, dropping bombs on people willy-nilly. You can't do that. Right? That's barbaric, but the manner in which they do it isn't considered barbaric. Right? Because they're the yes. West with, with all their, you know, wisdom and knowledge. Right? And I mean that facetiously, by the way. Yeah, but they, they, don't, get, they don't get sarcasm. But, but Brother Isa, right? The long and short of it is, the, this person is, the argument seems to be Islam, Muslims were bad for fighting the Romans. Okay. Didn't the Bible say that they were cursed? Didn't the Bible say that they're filthy? He doesn't have a problem with that, does he? Not at all. Yeah. Uh, to be quite honest, I don't. I don't think I need to hear the rest of this. Person. No, the, the, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're pretty much done. Um, so oh, let me remove. Let me just drop this. So, so uh, I guess. Um, look, I, I would. I I would say okay. Probably he was an ex-Muslim or he was a Muslim at some point. No problem probably. with that. But I, I, you know, but the things that he said, a few of these things were lies um, and other things were emotional arguments and a complete uh, uh, double standard that he held Islam to um, and uh, a, a lack of knowledge of Islam. It's it's quite simple. Uh, for me, this. So emotional, I, I'm, I'm ruling. It's it's all emotional and some lies here and there. Emotional argumentation. Okay. Right. This person, he was never a Muslim. He's actually an Egyptian Coptic. It's possible. It's, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it no? is possible. Yeah. But I, I would say for this person at least, um, there is there, there are reasons if they were Muslim. There are reasons for living, leaving Islam rather. I don't think a reasonable... Remember, when we say a reason, we mean to say it's that this thing is reasonable. I don't think any of the reasons are reasonable and that we can discuss them and that we can explicate them. I think this person left Islam and they kind of gave it away for hedonism, right? By the way that they act, we can see this by the lack of issue with fornication and adultery. We already understand what their uh, uh, modus operandi is. If you want to be that way, go in your own lands, be that way. Do that in the privacy of your homes. I don't have to be in your home. I don't have to participate in it. And I have certain lines that I, sorry, there's something that flew in front of me. I wasn't slapping the mic yeah. for any random reason. I don't you know almost, what the hell it was. You almost like, completely knocked your mic. <laughs> right, Allah. Right, right. So, you know, Alhamdulillah for Islam, that Islam does not teach us to be hedonistic. And at the end of the day, people can leave Islam for a million and one reasons. And the purpose of the streams is to try to see if there were any good reasons for leaving Islam. Mm. And I think, Brother Isa, I conclude from my side, 
I didn't hear a single one. No, no reason. So, so it is emotional. Emotional I mean, reason. Some, I think someone give the reason. I would say in the chat. I wouldn't put it up on screen because I don't know violate any YouTube policies. But clearly, I think that's the case. And yeah. we hope that Allah guides those who seek His guidance. I mean, I mean, um. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. It's about that time. Okay, so I appreciate everybody coming here. I think it was definitely a fruitful night. We had about um, uh, a little over 160 60, uh, peoples uh, between your stream and mine, um, uh, Ijaz. So it was definitely a fruitful night. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you, uh, those who, who supported uh, either Ijaz or myself with uh, super chats or super stickers. Definitely appreciate it. May Allah reward uh, you guys for that. I mean, and may Allah uh, reward you guys also for those who shared the stream and, and liked, you know, liked the stream and watched from the beginning to the end. Alhamdulillah. Um, but I think we're going to leave it at that and just uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Uh, I'll talk to you guys at some point and, and we'll try to figure out when we're going to do another one. All right. Inshallah. Just quick, two quick announcements. Uh, I put out a video refuting some guy that think I said the Shahada wrong, who does not know the difference between an Aleph and a Lam, or that there's a silent Aleph. We literally, he actually sat down and said, you can teach me. And boy, did we teach him. Secondly, tomorrow I've got another stream, um, Trinity Talk Tuesdays, where we, we can go more into like textual criticism and history and Aqidah and these types of things. And mm -hmm. Brother Issa, feel free to join me, inshallah. It'll be a mm -hmm. pleasure to have you there. And uh, Everyone, assalamu alaikum for me, and I'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. All right, and alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina may yahdihi lahu falamul dilala wa min yudlil falahadi ala wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasulu salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi wa la alihi wa asabi wa min sara ala nahjihi wa stana bi sunatihi la yumiddin amabad assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh